It's the Bob and Tom Show. Oh, there's... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty more, seven, eighteen wheels on a big rig. Everybody, here we go. Oh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty more, seven, eighteen wheels on a big rig. And they're rolling, 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 rolling. Roll. Okay, let's back them up. Here we go. Oh, there's eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, four, six, five, four, three, two, one, wheels on a big rig. Okay, just the even numbers. Oh, Oh, there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen wheels on a big ring. Yeah. And they're rolling, 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 rolling. Okay, just the odd numbers. Here we go. Oh, there's one, three, five, seven, nine, uh, nine, nine eleven, 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 thirteen, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen, 17 wheels. Oh. oh, you're so smart in math, yeah. Okay, well, how about, how about uh, Roman numerals, Mr. Smart Bob? Oh, there's I, 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 V, 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 I, 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 X, 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 I, X, I, I, X, I, 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 X, I, V, X, V, X, V, I, X, V, I, I, X, V, I, 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 wheels on a big ring. And they're rolling, 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 rolling. Okay. Get out your wrist calculator. Let's divide the wheels by pi. Here we go. Oh, there's 3.14185551212920134680. And they're rolling, 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 rolling. Yes, indeed. It's, uh, it's Pi Day. Good morning. It's the Bob and Tom Show. TGIP. Hey, God, it's Pi Day. <laughs> Have you used that as slang when you were in high school? Pie, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got the old fur pie. Did you get any pie this weekend? Stuff like yeah, that? Yeah. No, never oh. actually. <laughs> really? The, no. I'm, I'm Christy Lee at the news desk. Hi. Sitting on her pie. <laughs> oh. There's Pat Godwin. I you, know, you try. Hey, chick. You understand why Not it's funny. pie day, Christy? What? Young kids. You understand why it's pie day today? Of course. Hello, yes. Josh. 314 There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee. How many how many uh, places can you do there, Tom, for pie? What is it, like 119 uh, or something? I, I can do three, 3.141. I think I really don't find it very interesting. I'm sure there are people who devote their lives to it, but frankly, I don't care. <laughs> it's just ballpark it for me. I'm all right. Isn't there every year somebody that does it all over the, yeah, the so, blackboards all across the campus or something? Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. It keeps them off uh, the street so they're not oh, blocking come traffic. On. Right. Math nerds. Sometimes the it's the janitor and they realize he's a math wizard. That's oh, right. Oh, yeah. oh. How do you like them apples, huh? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in a long time. <laughs> Mm. Oh, nor have I. Uh, now, uh, yeah, Pi Day. I'm not sure. Do we have any uh, Pi? I know we have some good science news, though. Science! We have some cool outer space news. Some interesting stuff going on at uh, one of the uh, moons of Saturn. NFL still making noise about free agent signings. We'll talk about that. Colts finally found a backup quarterback. Oh. Something that I was a witness to yesterday morning. The one, the only NFL expert, Tom Griswold, said, why don't the Colts do this, he said. And by God, they did. They listened to you, buddy. Um, they must have this room bugged or no, something. I was just kind of hoping because I, I was so upset that Gardner Minshew, my favorite player in the NFL, is exiting. Going to the Raiders. Going to the Aces Raiders. He wants to go to the Super Bowl. Oh, well, so. So well, he's waiting until <laughs> Vegas hosts the next one. And then I, would right love, I would love to see him go to the Super Bowl, actually. Uh, in any event, uh, Joe Flacco who is uh, purportedly the nicest guy in the NFL, is back. Yeah. So that'll be fun. That'll yeah, be sure. interesting. We'll see. what. And you got some other NFL news coming up? Yeah, we got uh, some rules uh, to talk about. And also um, uh, one of the players at the Combines being compared to Randy Moss, but not the way you think. Uh, he's a very good receiver, but uh, there's, a good another, fisherman? there's another reason. Is Randy Moss a good fisherman? Yeah. I did not know. Yeah, that. he likes to fish a lot. Really? How, mm -hmm. do, you, how do you know? I follow him on Instagram. No kidding. Yeah. Oh, that's he's surprising. Out, he's out there fishing. You, yes. This is the second or third day in a row you have absolutely flabbergasted Tom Griswold. He is shocked uh, you by your behavior. Island, I you? met him down in the Caribbean yeah. one time, and we, be, I mean, I just Was he doing plot, Pilates he on the beach? He was doing Randy Moss's boot camp on the beach. Oh. So every morning you could go and work out with Randy Moss. 
I like to watch from my balcony with a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> was he charging for that? Or? It was an all-inclusive place, so you got to do it. It, it looked harder than anything I could yeah. ever do. Yeah. They were running sprints back and forth on the... No. Nobody had ever seen my anything vacation. like him. And but he was so tall, so fast, so big. Giant hands, never dropped anything. And then he they hosted a party one night, and he and his wife were there. And their room was actually right above mine, so I would of, see uh, her all the time. A lot of uh, <clears throat> action going on. Uh, I don't oh, know. Uh, I didn't it was hear from anything. A little, uh, little booty camp, if you will. <laughs> mm. Teeny tiny uh, city, a uh, little town called Rand, West Virginia. And uh, there's a great 30 for 30 about him that said, if I didn't make it in the NFL, I was going to have to go back to Rand University. And I didn't want to do that. Well, he, I didn't want to do that as Randy <laughs> talks, but uh, Rand University was kind of a, uh, it was a corner drugstore where everybody hung out. And oh. that, that's where the people who, you know, oh, we'll tell you about life, boy, yeah. get over here. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's Rand University, and he didn't want to end up there. So and He was very nice. I really liked him, and so I just started following him on Instagram. Well, he that's was famous. He, got, he, got, uh, he also got uh, fined in the NFL one time, and a reporter asked him how Randy was going to pay. Yeah. Check it, Randy. Checks. How do you pay, man? Uh, if you don't write checks, how do you pay these guys? Straight cash, homie. Straight <laughs> cash, homie. Straight cash. Uh, Randy yeah. Moss. What yeah. was that in reference to? A fine, right? Wasn't he paying a... He got yeah, a fine. Yeah, fine. I don't know if it... Uh, he yelled at a female reporter one time in the locker room and called her woman a couple times. <laughs> Remember that? Oh. Yeah, and he also uh, got fined for... Um, Miming, if you will, pulling his pants down for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, oh. When he was with the Vikings, he evidently mooned the crowd, and he got fined for that. So it could have been referring to that. <laughs> oh. but, and he said he was only doing that because when the bus, the, evidently it's there's a lot of uh, uh, traditions that go on in the Packers, as you might oh, imagine. Green Bay me. is one of these storied <laughs> franchises. Like the kids, Tom, did you know this? In training camp at the Green Bay Packers, the kids loaned the players their bikes. And it's a tradition, like it's been Ooh. going on since the 50s. The kids around Green Bay, they bring their bikes, and the players ride their bikes back and forth from the facilities to the practice field. Oh, that's cool. And oh, it's really something when the, when so, a player gets to, you know, uh, you know, um, Bart Starr rode my bike or whatever you would well, that's now great. You say. Whatever. That's awesome. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers stole my bike or whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, he could be running for vice president. You don't but know. But apparently when the bus comes in with another team, like when the Vikings would come to Lambeau Field, the tradition is that a lot of the Packers fans moon the bus. Yeah. So what Moss uh, was doing was... So it was perfectly acceptable. It was perfectly acceptable. No, no, there should be no yeah. fine. So uh, I don't okay. know why it was being full little quim pro quo. Um, um, I, quid, thought, pro I thought a quim was uh, a, uh, a uh, uh, yeah, sorry, female yeah, uh, term, but okay. okay. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of West Virginia... This show will I be coming Randy. to you. I love Randy Moss. I love West Virginia. We'll be coming to you from uh, Charleston, West Virginia, yeah. of course. Friday, April 5th, special edition, courtesy of Rock 105. Hope to see you there. Uh, we're going to be at the uh, the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. Then a special comedy show that night featuring Josh, who's right there. Hi. Uh, Mr. Pat Godwin, I see him through the glass. Hello. Get that guitar tuned up for that special show April 5th. Willie G will be there. And Jeff Oske. Should be a great show. Uh, your host will be, wait a minute, me and Christy. It looks, looks hey, like this look piece of papers, that. right? It's going to be great. It'll be a fun time. Uh, now, uh, we have uh, other things coming up in sports. You want to give me a little, little preview? Uh, we got a world record coming up. Uh, and uh, like we said, rules changes in the Eagles. Uh, the Eagles uh, are, got a rules change they want to talk about for the onside kick. Oh. Really? Mm. Yes, and I'm not going to go over to Al because it's a story, and we're trying okay, to uh, fine, talk fine. later about these things. And we have Eagles in the news, not the band and not the football team, but so, the, uh, the that leaves the bird. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the 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 bald eagle. Yeah. Somebody killing? No, no, no. no, it's, no, a, no. It's, a, it's a it's a happy show. We have too some, many eagles. No, we have also uh, in the news. <laughs> thin the herd. We're not thinning the herd. We also have two cans and parrots in the news. Uh, so in, if, for our bird hunk today, we have giant hybrid sheep in the news. Hybrid sheep? And the sale of some testicles, which is very, very weird. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a uh, cool story about uh, the late George H.W. Bush and his speedboat. It's impossible. There's, there are no cool stories about <laughs> any of the Bushes. Oh, I know. I'm a fan. Yeah, George H.W. Yeah. Bush. Uh, no, no, no kidding. Great athlete, uh, but a cool boat. 
Even if, if what, even if you whatever, if you don't like him as a, as a human being, that's your problem. But uh, the older one was a love great a athlete. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, was he all? Was he ever all pro? He wasn't all pro, he but was never he, all pro. <laughs> yeah. And what kind of an athlete was he? He was a guy. He loved to tell dirty jokes and he loved to wear crazy socks. How can you not like the guy? I find it. <laughs> and he had a cool <laughs> boat. Easy. He had a boat with a triple Evan There we go. Oh, oh really? He's oh got the, God! How uh -huh. can you? Oh, he's a poster child for the pretentious society of America. So something's going on with it. Yes, yuck. Well, you don't like boats? What's wrong with you? I don't I'm think you like. You don't have a it boat. Sounds to me like you don't like familial dynasties. <laughs> oh, well, there's that. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, these families that have mothers and fathers and uh, children who are successful. Yeah, that every yeah, all of them they are get under yeah. my skin. You know yeah. something? I, I am. Um, yep. You'd, you'd be a good float boat guy. Float boat. What I said mean, I like, like pontoon. Is yeah. that a pontoon? Yeah. Oh, pontoon. Oh, you're, you're even too hoity-toity to say pontoon. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Float boat? A nice float boat. Yeah. Whatever you want to. No, whatever you want to call it. You are. What a giant boat snot. When I was a little boy, when I was a little boy, I thought it was plontoon, which is <laughs> sort of funnier. Yeah. <laughs> Mommy, can we get in that plontoon boat? I always thought <laughs> that those is were funnier. I always no, thought those not, were so cool looking. No, honey, they're less than us. We can't get on the pontoon <laughs> boat. <laughs> that happened. On the good ones, you could even water ski off them really sure, well <laughs> i mean there's some of the bigger ones absolutely uh, you of course you got to be careful you don't you know don't tilt, tilt too much or the grill's gonna spill over <laughs> you have hot coals <laughs> in the water oh come on Whoa. you know what you can do on your pontoon boat listen to your raycon earbuds oh, what an afternoon that would be all right you can raycons offer amazing audio audio quality about half the price of other premium audio brands. So check out all the tens of thousands of five-star reviews about Raycon on the internet. And Raycon has those optimized gel tips that fit every ear ever made, whether you're out walking the dog or taking a quick jog or, or running to the grocery store, wear your Raycon. You're driving to your spring break. They have eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life. You don't have to worry about... Uh, whether Raycons are ready to go, they're always ready to go with, with battery life like that and seamless Bluetooth syncing. And, of course, we have a deal for you. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tom today to get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's 20% off and free shipping at buyraycon.com slash Tom. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. And I'll break in with my spring break notion once again. Uh, get those uh, sealed headphones for the kids. Mm. Stick them in the back seat. They can watch and play their games, watch their movies, and you you are just in heaven <laughs> not being bothered with the, are we there yet, daddy? You know what I'm talking about. Sure. Christy, you've been there without the daddy of, uh, remark, of course. <laughs> <laughs> daddy we, are, drove are, occasionally. Are, are, I mean, are we there yet? <laughs> Mommy's what you would be hearing. Oh, okay. Uh, are we there yet, Uncle Joshy? <laughs> hey, kid, be quiet. Uh, <laughs> now, um, also coming up, we have uh, one of the dumbest world records we've had in quite some time. And uh, well, skin rash you. news. Skin rash. <laughs> skin rash. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. This is the weirdest story. <laughs> yeah, but oh, And then I'm afraid I'd be a loser on this one. Zucchini versus cucumber coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hello, this is comedian John Evans, the High Plains thrifter, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Good morning, friend. Uh, 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 mummy Cass, would you be kind enough to play one more song for us? Then we'll take a little break and come back with yes, more. Is that possible? Yes. yes. All right, baby. We're going to give you a song about a hot dog vendor. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Hot dog <laughs> vendor. Oh, I love this one. Who doesn't like a good wiener, baby? <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Baby, oh, that's just brilliant. Uh, you got to see the mummies uh, oh. just to see the choreography. I just wish they played better. What's yeah. the problem? Huh? A little tighter. Holy yeah. hell! Yeah. yeah. John Coltrane would be Man, saying, would saying to the I've guy, never seen one played hands free. That guy. <laughs> How did you do that sax solo? Uh, God, yeah. that was great. He's got though. extra appendages, man. Yeah, yeah he does. Wow. Yeah, he does. Oh, wow. That's just brilliant. Hey, hi, I'm Tom. This is Chick. That's Josh. And this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston. The Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guests. Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth Horns Plus. Do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right. It all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston or Deacon, Come out and see us live on the morning of... Hi, this is Bobcat Gold. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. It's pie day. Woo-hoo. How about some egg pie, right, Keish? Oh, yeah. They that call is that great. egg oh. pie, don't they? they? Do. Yeah. Uh, 3.141, are we giving it up right there? Yeah, I'm out. Okay. I, I have no idea. Um, now, uh, we're going to check in with the sporting scene. With pie chicken R game. squared, right? Isn't that what they say? Pie R squared? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, of course. 
Again, I never caught on why that was interesting or important, but we spent a lot of time in math dealing with it. And there's a wide receiver at the uh, the combine this past uh, couple of weeks. Uh, his name's Xavier Leggett, and he's from uh, South Carolina. And uh, people are comparing him to Randy Moss because he has uh, a lot. He sounds like his southern accent sounds like Randy Moss. Oh. And here, here's for your uh, your own judgment. Uh, I always open myself up when I let Tom judge it. Here. <laughs> here's uh, here's Xavier Leggett. Oh man, I say the deep ball, man. But uh, I really feel like any way that I get the ball in my hand, I could get it to that end it's like zone. Forrest Gump. A little bit Forrest, uh, Forrest Gumpy. It's a beautiful accent. It is. Yeah. That is mm -hmm. deep That's, south. They play it again. Boy. Really. Yeah. Oh, uh, man, I say the deep ball, man. But uh, I really feel like any way that I get the ball in my hand, I could get it to that end zone. Oh, that's a beauty. Uh -huh. you know who else I want you... shrimp. Wait a minute. You get oh, yeah. it to that end zone. You know the song, It's a Great Day to Kick Somebody's oh, Ass? Oh, yeah, Paul Thorne. Oh, he does sound like he Paul He sounds like Paul uh -huh. Thorne, who was uh, not only a great guitar player and songwriter, he uh, actually was a boxer. Did you know this, that he was in the ring with, uh, wasn't it? Uh, Roberto Duran. Roberto, yes. Roberto Duran, no moss. Yeah, they both had that beautiful. Is, where's this guy from? A uh, little town in South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina. Well, that's the capital, but, I mean, it's a little older town. Uh, he, a uh, 4-3-9-40, played for the Gamecocks, 71 catches, 1,255 yards, uh, 4.39, 40-yard dash, 225 pounds. And like uh, like he said, he wants to wants to score, wants to go to the end zone. Oh, man, I say the deep ball, man, but uh, <laughs> I really feel like any way that I get the ball in my hand, I could get it to that end zone. That's that's even thicker than uh, Randy Moss's. And that's Randy, a, yeah, I, yeah. And Randy's yeah. Uh, is starting to go away. The more broadcasting he does, the mm. more. Uh, Christy's showing you. You need yeah, to put I, that gonna, up on I'll social. To, I'll put it up on my social. Christy media. has a picture of Finally her. Finally found uh, it. It took me forever. Her being enveloped by Randy Moss. Randy Moss. Well, you he's forget a, how. He's a tall guy. Yeah. You forget how big those guys are on the NFL fields. And then yeah. you see them. In, yeah, I see them in person. Wait, wait, whoa. Especially a, a, a teeny tiny person like your Christy Lee. Oh, I you Thank you. Well, is that, is that a good thing? She's fun size. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. what I've heard. If Christy was a candy bar, she'd be fun size. Sure. Yeah. I think she's yeah. perceived by many of our listeners. Uh, at, the, uh, sure. at, 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 at the risk of opening up a can of worms, there are a couple of rules changes that have been suggested by the teams, and then they take a look at them, and then they vote on them, and we'll see if they become rules. But the Philadelphia Eagles have introduced the onside kick alternative. alternative okay. Other than the onside kick, all right? right? <laughs> He's got that look on his face. He's ready to pounce. Uh, they, uh, you have a ch choice of kicking an onside kick or converting a fourth and 20 from your own 20-yard line. Now, this alternative also recently used in the XFL and the USFL and whatever the name of the new league is. You ain't no more FL. Okay, so <laughs> USA. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Tom with a follow-up. It's wonderful follow -up. No, I'm trying to understand what you're saying. So, in other words, your team has just scored. There's not a lot of time left. There's nothing to understand. And you so either it's kick it onside <laughs> or you have a play from your own 20-yard line okay. and you have to get 20 yards for a first down. Mm. Which would um, you rather do? No? Uh, no, you shouldn't be able to keep the ball. Even for one play? Yeah, no. 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 You want to you hold the You got to kick the ball off. You just score. You don't get the ball back. <laughs> but you can choose. That's the no, rule. No, no, there's, no. There's no. That's not the way it's supposed to be. What do you think? I I think the fourth and 20 sounds uh, sounds fun. Really? All right. Yeah. I it's don't. more football action in a way. Right. Why not? Because you're supposed to give up the ball. I think everything. You got to steal they... it back. They don't give it to you. Well, yeah, but this goes into your uh, percentages and how the onside kick and uh, people don't get the uh, football in overtime, and you're whining about that. Okay. Right. So do you know how many onside kicks succeed? Like that's, about 3% or right, something Right, that's why like it's that. a good rule. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, you're not supposed to give the ball back. You just scored. Now it's the other guy's turn. Okay. And uh, the Colts... Uh, that went nowhere. The Colts uh, have signed uh, Joe Vla Flacco as their backup quarterback, and Tom has never been happier. <laughs> and he's still kind of upset about Gardner Minshew being in Las Vegas yes, right I'm now. Very upset. Don't be upset. He's uh, he got the on. He got the bag. Yeah. You go. You go, Gardner. Good money. Helping, helping himself. <laughs> Joe Blacko. That would be... 
whole whole different thing. <laughs> I don't know what that. I don't, I don't, I don't know, know what he's I don't going know what for we, there either. But I'm trying to, to figure out the end game, and maybe that's my mistake. He's getting one over there. I don't know. I don't know what we're supposed to do with that with that comment. I don't know what we're. How, how, unless, I think we just got. I think we just let it go. <laughs> What do you so got, Chick? Add Joe Flacco to this list. Uh, Kirk Cousins, uh, he's going to be a Falcon. Baker Mayfield resigned with Tampa. Uh, Ryan Tannehill let, yet to make up his mind. Uh, Russell Wilson, of course, with the Steelers. Gardner Minshew, as we said, with the Raiders. Jacoby Brissett back with New England. Jameis Winston signed with the Browns, replacing Mr. Flacco. Tyrod Taylor is signed with the Jets. Still <laughs> the only quarterback named after a car park. <laughs> Sam that damn Darnold signed with the Vikings as uh, as a backup. Uh, Drew Locke signed with the Giants. Well, maybe Darnold will start there. Who knows? And Mason Rudolph um, goes from the Steelers to the Titans after uh, uh, the Steelers signed So you, you've Russell only Wilson. got one, one quarterback named after a car party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other named after famous reindeer? <laughs> <laughs> so like a, Just Mason Rudolph. <laughs> None like a Donner, you know, Steve Donner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their team's a blitzing. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> their team's a blitzing. <laughs> yeah. Saquon Barkley probably still. Uh, Barkley. Come on. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. On. Saquon right. Barkley. Quan, Quan Barkley. Barkley. Uh, signed with. <laughs> Signed with the Philadelphia Eagles, still probably the biggest signing uh, from the free agent uh, uh, hubbub. Uh, Josh Jacobs, uh, some say a better running back than Saquon Barkley. I would be among that number. Uh, Jacobs signed with the Green Bay Packers. And Derrick Henry, they call him the king. King, king Henry. Henry. Yes. He goes from the Titans to the Baltimore Ravens. Austin Eckler goes to that team in Washington. Uh, DeAndre Swift signed with the Chicago Bears. Did you ever say that in school? Swift move, ex lax. Yeah, you ever say yes. that one? yeah, that was yes. around for a while. Yeah, sure was. Swift move, ex lax. My, my dad said smooth move, ex lax. <laughs> smooth <laughs> move, ex lax. <laughs> I love it. Swift one. Well, I you're swift, aren't you? Yeah, man. I, you don't hear that no, anymore. No, you don't. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not... Uh, Garrett Cole from the New York Yankees has a problem with his his bobo. Oh, I love he, him. He's... Brady Bunch movie, uh, Anchorman. Or uh, uh... Oh, that's Gary Cole. <laughs> this is Garrett Cole, the uh, Cy Young uh, pitcher with the Yankees. Oh. He's got a problem with his bobo, and he's seeing a specialist in Los Angeles. If he can get in. Oh, course. it's very bobo tough. Yeah. It's always. Wouldn't that be hilarious? Tough to get what? in. What? Chick's point that. You've got some serious athlete with a major injury. Uh, I, we can't get him in. To, we can't get him in till May. Like the rest of us. Like the rest yeah, of us. Right. Yeah. I would not be surprised <laughs> if they we get to it. Well, we're to the point. It just has to happen. Where they have a picture of Garrett Cole in the waiting room, waiting to see his special. <laughs> <laughs> and they go oh. with a camera. How's it going? Well, I kind of looked at all the magazines. I got my phone, of course. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I played. I, I solved my wordle. Uh, I don't know about that, but you know, I got up this morning. I did my wordle. Yeah. I got my wordle. I'm on a two-day streak. After what would you get today? Oh, God. Uh, I got I'm it to... in four. Four. Today. Four. Got it in four. Hanging in there. Wordle, I, haven't, I haven't done it yet. Don't say anything. Wordle told me splendid when I solved it. Well, that's great. Hey. Isn't that nice? Oh. Very nice. nice. And then I got connections as well in the mini. Good for you. Now, uh, Josh, with Wordle, you only have six chances. Mm -hmm. And if you get it, the last one, you get a whoo. Ah, thank goodness you made it. A PH, kind of what is it? No, sorry, it's yeah, PHEW, I believe. Q, yeah. Now, what if you don't get it? Uh, uh, um, uh, if you don't execution. get connections, I'm, I'm, I, I don't get connections half the time, and it always says, just says next time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey. Next time, it'll do better. Okay. It doesn't say like you suck or right. something right. like that. Yeah. <laughs> no. And the, big, it... and the big news story yesterday: the Wordle uh, clones are going to be attacked. But yeah. The well, there are Times. a lot of them out there. I don't too. know why the New York Times wordle caught on, but it really, I told you yesterday, I have no idea how it got to be such an important to, part of my life. Do you have to subscribe to the New York Times to be able to play wordle? I, I uh, believe you can play for free. I don't know. I'm, I'm a subscriber, so I already oh, get it. Okay. But, uh, I'm a subscriber as well. Are you? I was well. mad yesterday at the mini. The mini what? The crossword. mini crossword puzzle. Oh. Yeah, did you do he it tried, yesterday? He, yeah, he tries to solve it in less than a minute. Yeah. 
and then I solved it one day, <laughs> and he's going to get mad. But I solved it. I, I knew I, I knew he would want a picture, so I, I took a picture. Screenshot. I solved it in 33 seconds. That's Whoa. pretty good. Right. Many, that's he, amazing. He said, that's bullshit. You know, <laughs> how did you get that? How did you get that picture faked? Uh, yeah, yesterday they had a non-word. What non-word? Uh, I got to Oh, on like, the connections? No, no, on on uh, the mini crossword of the New York. Oh, yeah. You, like, you got a lot of beef with the guy putting the crossword puzzle together. You well, you, you argue with him once or twice a week. Did you do it yesterday? I forget. The word was like zelf. Zelf? I, 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 oh, zuzh. Like zuzh something up, like dress something yeah. up. Like oh, okay, yeah. It's very much a fashion. It's a Z-U-Z-H. I've never yeah. seen it or heard it. Zuzh it up, yeah. Yeah, and I've I've heard of it. Sure, uh, really. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely out there. Apparently, I would. I would have apparently, to... I'm not attending enough drag events. <laughs> I'd have no idea how to <laughs> spell it. Okay. <laughs> Look, Joe Blacko, it's not just primarily a gay thing. I've heard I've heard zhuzh yeah. up, and I sure. have a long zhuzh. record of heterosexuality. So far, anyway. No, I didn't yeah. Know that way. I mean, who knows? I'm almost right at you, Frank. You're almost 100. <laughs> percent Yeah, almost 100. <laughs> percent I have a feeling it's some greater New York slang that I've never encountered. Uh, <clears throat> I got it eventually. Um, well, now uh, for that. we have Christy Lee across. Do you want to give me a little teaser in the news, and we'll get back to sports? Yes, we have uh, staff trying to raise a red fox kit. But they don't, want, they don't want the you little cat to wash your <laughs> hands. Man, that's comedy. Not that red fox, oh, a real oh. red fox. Um. <laughs> did I hear, did I hear now red we fox? got something. But they don't want the little. Who wrote this? Oh, this one is, of the finest. It's great. It's um. It, uh, it fits so wonderfully. If you say John Hancock? Sebastian, I'm leaving. No, it's uh. It's somebody really famous. I forget. I'll, I'll, I'll find out for you. That's a great theme. Is Herbie Hancock the Night Court theme? He's da, one da, of them. Da, da. Um, Taxi was a great one. Bob James. That yeah. is a nice one. Remember really Taxi? Yeah. yeah. It was and great. Sanford and Son, is, I still think, a terrific show. Funny. Yeah. And Red Fox, great comedian. Famous for these to call party. That's important fact. <laughs> oh, here we go. Hygiene. The toughest thing in the world. Oh. Say, you got to wash your ass. Ah. Mm. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one, Brad. Keep that well, in he was, Wasn't he kind of saying that before anybody else was? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> celebrating in the... Uh, it was uh, Quincy, Quincy Jones. Oh, oh he, Quincy he wrote the uh, Sanford Center. Yeah. Okay. Really? All right. Yeah. Okay. Man, that is a great... How do they make that harmonica sound like that? It's so weird. Somebody, uh, I'm sure, like Bones Williams or something came in. Just and awesome. Boom, just killed it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Funky organ. It's like they combine the harmonica with Frampton's voice thing. Is yeah. that, Pat, is that a uh, hooter? It sounds like a, just a real low harmonica, maybe. I really? Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not it, sure. It, you're yeah. a hooter. So why are we talking about Sanford and Son? Uh, because I brought we up did not want to talk anymore about your boxes. wordle and crosswords or whatever. I didn't bring it up. Well, you certainly <laughs> perpetuate. You zhuzh up. Zhuzh. zhuzh. Please, sir. Zhuzh up. Zhuzh. Really? It's called Please zhuzh. use it correctly. It's a word. Zhuzh. Used by four people. Your microphone argument had some merit, but the, that does have merit. The zhuzh, that's a, it's okay. a word. The microphone words. argument was, was zhuzh in slang the for minute? microphone is Mike M I C, not M I C, not not M I K E. That's Correct. True. Was zhuzh in your mini crossword? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's I, legit. Sorry, never heard of. Them. Are the mini crosswords a little easier? Is that why they're well, they're yeah, small? Sure. Yeah, but the uh, you just try to do it less than a minute. <laughs> You'd like it, Christy, because it's diminutive, just like you. Remember your your phone Folks, size. I'm uh, sorry. I tried to let him know that no one wanted to hear about this, but look at them now. Well, Josh, should we do things like read? Oh, I know like you Josh do. Read. I what know are you? Aren't you on uh, Russia? Are you still in Russian literature right now? What do you want? You know, you know that was something I, I thought I'd share with friends. I'm not, trying. I'm trying to ask yes, a question. I, I caught him reading yesterday. Not, I didn't say. What about the Russian literature, egghead? I didn't say that. Josh is in the green room. Reading that, what was that new book? Grandpa's uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Heavens with Grandpa. It's by Grandpa. Oh, yeah, Grandpa's Money Shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's the sequel to Grandpa's Phallic Adventures, and I wanted to find out the continuing saga. <laughs> is, it, is it like Wednesdays with Grandpa? Is it Machamba doing a whole list Tuesdays of with month, with month or weeks? Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, on a ver did you see this? On a very serious note, Mitch Album had to be evacuated from Haiti. Yeah, oh, he's got a. He's got a. He's got. He's got a. Uh, he Hades. takes care of little kids there. 
to I me. bet they grabbed him by the ears. <sighs> oh, is he a guy? I've never seen the man. How about great. He's look, a, look it up and look at the size of his ears. I mean, heroically uh, adopting little kids there. It's amazing. But he had, he had to be rescued. Gigantic. Wow. This morning they said he was still there. Uh, yesterday it said he'd been evacuated. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe they, maybe you went back. All I Tom, know is it's, it's, don't, it's a, don't disagree with Ace. Uh, okay. Uh, now, um, uh, don't we'll, we're, we'll, we're back at the sports page. More sports coming up. <laughs> oh, by the way, Ace, you're a big bacon fan. Is that correct? Everybody's a big bacon yeah, yeah. fan. Yeah, make like sure you bacon. cook it. That's in the news. <sighs> cook it. Uh, well, oh, really? Uh, <laughs> well, it's up well, to you. Wait a minute. Don't, don't give it away, Christy. You don't, you don't like the bacon tartare? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to find you're gonna find out why the bacon tartare is an extraordinarily bad idea <laughs> coming up. Had you ever heard of that, Christy? I had never heard of yeah, that. Yeah, it, it's got a couple big words I can't pronounce. I'm going to mm-hmm. give you I'm going to give you the day off if you want to figure out how to pronounce them. <laughs> uh, coming up, why it's you should Latin cook your for, bacon thoroughly. Latin for tapeworm? Yeah, uh, it must be. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the longest word I've ever seen. Uh, right now, the Bob and Tom Show, sponsored by BetterHelp. Uh, we spend a lot of our lives wishing we had more time. Time for what? Maybe uh, read a book, Josh? Um, hit, hit the gym, Christy? Take a nap? Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, one of the important things you can do is uh, make your mental health a priority. And BetterHelp is making it a lot easier to get into therapy. It involves more than 25,000 therapists. What I'm talking about is a way to access therapy significantly easier than getting in your car, driving across town, sitting in the lobby, blah, blah, blah. No, this is uh, taking advantage of uh, contemporary technology. We're so used to it now. Zoom calls, et cetera, et cetera. What I'm talking about is uh, taking a brief questionnaire, getting matched with a licensed therapist. And by the way, you can switch therapists anytime, no additional charge. And the therapy itself is done online. So you can do it like a Zoom call, or you can do it like a phone call, or you could do it texting back and forth. It's all about whatever works for you, and it's all about convenience. You can do it where you are at any at any given time when you get it all set up. So it's a smart thing to do, and it's a smart way to do it. See what I'm talking about. Check out BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. The slash BT Show part of that will knock 10% off your first month. So see what I'm talking about. BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. And start feeling better, getting your priorities organized, and find out what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Once again, BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp. Dot com slash BT show. Tell them the Bob and Tom show sent you, sent you, I should say. And the Bob and Tom show is sponsored by Better Help. Also uh, coming up, Weird Sheep News. Uh, and also, would you like to have a chat <clears throat> with Marilyn Monroe? Sure. Nicely well, done, Tom. It's coming up. This is the Bob and Tom show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom. Police in Athole, Massachusetts. Where? I'm sorry. Uh, excuse me. We had to beep you there. Athole. Spell it. A T H O L. That's a thole. Is, no, I, nope, they, it's Athole. Isn't there? Isn't there? Uh, <laughs> isn't there? Sports team, the Flames. <laughs> oh, no, they're the Flaming Atholes. <laughs> oh my God. Well, at least we're is that all is all that actually? I, I need. <laughs> proof. What do you mean? I need proof that that's a town. It is not the. It's the majors. Thank you. <laughs> the Major major Atholes. <laughs> oh, wait a second. I'm looking. Police in Athole, Massachusetts, have named a new canine police dog after. New England Patriots, Thailand, Rob Gronkowski. Oh, my God. It's a real place, Christy. Population 11,584. That's a pretty big size. Uh, nice size town. Size town yeah. That's a big Ethel. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of big Ethel. <laughs> that sounds to me like Let's the big Ethel. Let's get journals. back to the sports mm. desk. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. Hey!
That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. If the Belgians don't like it, the fries of today are fundamentally Parisian, according to food historian Pierre Leclerc, Me who said Leclerc. in an interview with the paper, which was published on International Belgian Friday, as if to add flame to the oil. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Palm frites. What is a palm frites? A French fry. French fry. French fry. Oh. Yes, Ace, you have a question. Well, you know, Tom, the first French fries weren't fried in France. What? Huh. They were fried in Greece. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, in Ace's defense, he's done that before, and none of you remembered. <laughs> no. No, uh, I remember yeah. it. No, I don't know. At least didn't. finally it made sense. Yes. A fair amount of acting on air sometimes, Chick. <laughs> words have different What's a duck fried in? What's a duck fried in? Turkey. Tur <laughs> what? Turducken. That is, Turducken. That, that isn't even a joke. <laughs> he may be having a stroke. <laughs> it's as that, bad as that crap over there. Well, that isn't no. even a joke. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, what, is, that what, does a dur what, no, what does a duck fight in? No, that's a, a duck fried in. Oh, what is a He's duck fried, fried in? He's fried in turkey. In? Yeah, turducken. They put that. No, Jeff, they, there's nothing no, there, man. There's not a joke. There. <laughs> you know what? There's the country turkey. That is not a joke in any language. Look, you know we what? need to. Can we box this I up? I am a professional comedian. <laughs> Let's send this to the Comedy Institute and see what they say. Hey, Tom, do Jeff a favor and don't tell the people where he's performing oh this weekend. God. I've, listen, decisions. I've burned through all my A material in here, all right? Already? You just got here 25 minutes ago. Oh, I gotta write some new stuff. <laughs> I can't even have, see, I know, I have two girls. It's obvious to me I'm being repaid for years and years of sexist behavior, right? <laughs> the, the zigs of the tables are turned, and now I'm the sweaty, palpitating dad, the kid at the door, you know, knock, knock. Hi, Mr. Schrader, here to pick up my, uh, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> I like your daughter very much. You know, I own a van. Oh, God. <laughs> she has the Kama Sutra bookmobile with her. You know. Benoit, Benoit balls hanging off the rearview mirror. You know. I love poontang, painted on the side. Oh, great. You know, I, uh... <laughs> I guess I got a few years to relax. Yeah, yeah you, you got a few. Yeah, as long as she's still, you know, eating her boogers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't say we didn't warn you. I'm warning you, don't do that. There's laughter ahead. I should be having a better time <laughs> if this was a part. This is Bob and Tom Radio. Radio. Why the penis and the breast? Those are the only two body parts we're crazy about getting as big as we can get them, right? Although some people are doing uh, the... Uh, the buttocks. The buttocks what? implants. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's new. Yeah, it is. Normally you don't well, see. then they, they sell uh, panties with inserts in them. Yeah. Or, and, and underwear for men with inserts yeah. in them. See, that's... Wow. No, you, I assume you, have, you haven't had any plastic surgery of any kind. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> I had an idea. Why do you if assume so, that? If so, you should sue. <laughs> <laughs> because because if, if the doctors arrived at that. Um, yeah, well, you, you should have seen them before. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless, no. you're, unless your nose was shaped like a penis uh, before, you really. This isn't enough. This, no. That, no, 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 that, no, no, They, they know, could have done no, a little no, bit no, better. No, We're going to take a break. Phil is one of our <laughs> friends. Let right? him defend himself. Oh, 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 no, 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 that was. On Bob, <laughs> that one was on Bob. You piled up. Nice. So, comedian Alan Havy joins us. What else is on your mind? What are you talking about these days? Oh, uh, you know, uh, my girlfriend wants to have kids now, and I, I don't want kids. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just kids are spoiled to that. I don't know what happened. I guess children had a major coup about 12 years ago. Spoiled little <laughs> bastards. Um, you know, when a kid's bad, what do they tell them now? No, time, time out. out. Time out. What mm-hmm. the hell is that? Time out. Yeah, I had to time out when I was a kid. I'd wake up and go, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Uh huh. Hi, this is comedian Tim Cavanaugh, and I win some tickets. News. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Better get my act together here. You know, a wise person once <laughs> said, "You know, everything. There's, there's a beginning. Mm-hmm. There's a middle. And there's an end." Yeah. And we are. We're in the end. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. <laughs> almost. Almost to the bottom. We're fine. Everything's cool. If you say so. Uh, uh, the 14th of March, uh, 3.14 Pi Day. Uh, okay, that's enough of that. Happy birthday to my nephew, Alec. Hi, Alec. Hey. He's, he's a good young man. How young? Uh, first year in college. So, what, so 18? 18, 18? Oh, he's 18 today, or maybe oh. 19. Yeah, you're this right. Is your nephew? Yes, yeah. Wow. Uh, he's a funny kid. He's a good kid. He shares a birthday with Albert Einstein. Well, how about that? Old uh, Al. <laughs> Al Eine. <laughs> and uh, one, of my, one of my favorites, Michael Caine. Oh, uh, Al Einstein, uh, Albert Einstein was not his uh, birth name. It was Brooks. Albert Brooks. <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> yes. right. He changed it because kind of, the... of a weird uh, swap there. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you know? Do you remember Michael Caine's real name? Oh no, it's something uh, difficult. Yeah, isn't it? Uh, Michael White or no? Is that right? No. Yes. It's good for you, Morris Mickelwhite. Oh, wow, yeah. Chick McGee. Uh, Mor- I, I believe it's Maurice um, uh, White or Michael White. I think Michael mm. White. Michael White. Maurice. But, uh, you know where he got the name Michael Caine, Christy? No, uh, I do. He saw a billboard, right? No, so, he uh, came out and the the Caine Mutiny was playing next door or something. Yeah. Oh. Uh, wow. Now, do you know who was in the Caine Mutiny, Christy Lee? No. <laughs> Why would I know Jake, that? Jake, you want to handle this one? Uh, Fred McMurray. Uh, My Bogart, three sons? Uh, yeah. Oh. People forget he was a great actor, actor before he... Yeah, Bogart. Oh, I'll take the money. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah Bogart. Yeah. And uh, some a blonde had a kid. That's pretty good. I, I have not seen King. You know, we mentioned earlier uh, uh, Quincy Jones, the great musician. Mm-hmm. And uh, Mr. Jones wrote this, among many other songs. <laughs> Stanford and Son in the news, kind of, today. <laughs> Quincy Jones must have been considered somewhat of a wonderkind, right? I mean, he was... Absolutely. Oh, he was yeah. brilliant immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Didn't Frank... Uh, Frank loved Quincy early on, right? Isn't that the story? Sure. Or something like that. Man. Sure. I mean, he's, he's, yeah, he's been around forever. And happy birthday. Yeah. Born in uh, 1933. Wow. So, uh, 91. Wow. Uh, now, um... Uh, we have uh, Mr. McGee. We have uh, several emails about uh, uh, topics we've uh, discussed so far. This one, of course, uh, never ends. This is always an open topic, and and our listeners know that. This is an email about Tom over-explaining something, uh, as Tom is wont to do. Uh, it says... Uh, I'm a communicator, Chair. This is from... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is from Justin. It says, Dear Bob and Tom, it's just a little moment of joy, Justin said, that went unnoticed but made me really laugh very hard. <laughs> While listening to the show the other morning, Christy started a story, and she said, uh, Yes, hey... Rare two-faced calf was born, to which Tom immediately had to say, Oh, that's a calf with two faces. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Tom. If only that information had been clear in the initial sentence. She'd been stepped on and you couldn't hear her. God, I love that man. You remember that she'd been stepped on? And I don't believe that for a second. We can get the well, how, how did, uh, how did uh, Justin from uh, somewhere in the United States hear Christy without, because he she he says he heard her say no, two-faced cat. filtered through the uh, din. <laughs> <laughs> you have been doing the crossword. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know, I don't know who needs to talk to you, because it's obviously not me, but I think we all share this sentiment. You do too much. Yeah. You do way too much, okay. and you feel like you have to control everything, and we are professionals too. 
<laughs> we have a mic. We've got a microphone. Okay, all right. I'm, no, I. You got to get the no, setup in there. You gotta, people have to hear what's happening. No, you can give people the benefit of the doubt every now and then. Go ahead. So much for the emails I had about Christy and Randy Moss meeting, and Randy Moss might be at our. April uh, 5th uh, broadcast in Charleston. But you go ahead and read your piece of crap email okay. over there. No, no, I'm just really? uh, reviewing. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, you've got something over there. I can see you. You've got it. you got it in your paw. It was handed to me. I haven't had time to review it yet. Oh. I can assure you, you won't want to hear it. Is it about me? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. You'd want to hear that. Some skiing. No, I thought it meant it about kind boats? of a negative. What's it's it about, about uh, our, uh, the controversial, what do you call uh, the egg and toast combination. Oh. I wasn't going to read it, but now you're making me. Somebody who has uh, grown children uh, emailed the other day and said, when my daughters were three and six, you guys were talking about the bookity bookity. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're I'm like 33 called. and 35. It's Here a delicious are, recipe. Again. And um, next week, Ms. Hooker is going to make the two variants, or variations, <laughs> I should say, of the uh, of the... Uh, eggs in a basket. You know what? And I got a bone to pick with you two. Also, what? what does it matter how big the hole is in the bread? It does make That's a difference. That's idiotic. Because no, the white, the egg white, doesn't have room. No. Well, then make, make it however big you want. Whatever, how, whatever the size is for the egg white to take up. That's the size of the egg white. It's not going to. Well, see, this this letter involves a friend of the show. My point was you take a piece of toast, you take a shot glass and make the hole. And that's only the size and that of the way, yolk. The, that way the yolk sits in there and the egg white spreads around in the bread and you flip it. It's delicious. Now, then you guys make it with, you make a bigger hole. And so the whole egg sits in whole there just in like the, yeah. a fried and, egg. And, and well, to, to defend Tom, you throw off the whole ratio of egg and bread at that point. Yeah. Won't it's the, thrown off. Won't the yolk overcook? No. Uh-uh. Well, no. that's all, that's not a bad thing. You don't. Yeah, no, no. You, uh, want, you want it a runny. No, you want the you want a okay. runny yolk. But here's a nice letter from Pat from Piedmont, South Carolina, a longtime friend of the show, um, and uh, it's he goes. I've been making eggs in a hole, as he calls it, for many years. I used to use a wine glass to cut out the circle. I don't anymore. After once I was pushing down, jammed the oh, <laughs> oh, no. glass broke. Uh, uh, cutting my finger requiring 11 stitches. Uh. On the positive side, I learned wow. that if you're actively bleeding, yeah. you will get fast-tracked at the emergency room. <laughs> oh, so to go back to Chick's earlier NFL story, or no, that was a, a New York Yankee story. Uh, we, we can, if you walk into the ER... Garrett and, Cole has his uh, elbow worked on, yeah. If they'd been bleeding, they would have take him, taken care of him right away. There you go. Thanks, Pat. Appreciate him, the uh, letter. Video of him on the Major League Baseball Network sitting in the office waiting for the <laughs> specialist. To see him. <laughs> that would be great. Keep cutting back all day long. He's still there reading highlights for children. I can't share too much of this email with you because it looks incredibly legit to me. But someone who knows Randy Moss loves our show. And he has told me that Randy is aware of our show and that he has sent Randy this email. Uh, it says, if your ears are burning this morning, it's because Christy Lee's talking about you and the Randy Moss Boot Camp at Caribbean Resort. She <laughs> says you were very interesting and very nice to her. Bob and Tom Show's coming to Charleston on April 5th for the morning radio show. Uh, and please, if you can, if you're in the area, I know you spend some time. Uh, it would be great to, to for you to stop by. This is from a gentleman named Steve, so I don't want to give away, like I said, okay, too cool. much. Okay, cool. All right. Be fun. So It'll it looks fun. like, uh, once again, we got a special show that evening. Incredibly legit. Yes. Comedy show. Josh on the stage. Patty G on the stage. Willie G on the stage. Jeff Oskey on the stage. Uh, Christy and I will be your hosts. Tickets are available for that right now, and that's the evening of April 5th, Charleston, West Virginia, thanks to Rock 105. Uh, what's coming up? Uh, the world record and more from... Uh, You've got to wash your ass. <laughs> Red Fox. All right. We're talking um, about hygiene. Okay, look forward to it. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Got something to say? Send us an email. Bob and Tom at BobandTom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. 
exit the studio with right. the whizzo meter. And um, we have uh, the crew standing by. Uh, Chick, are you going to come and follow me? And uh... yes, no, okay, this okay. would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Do you want to explain what the whizzo meter is, Christy? Yes, it's a small device that you hook to a urinal, and men, of course, uh, urinate into the device, and it reads out. A velocity, I guess, would be the correct term. It's like Are you there, Tom? Can you hear us now? Can you, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, we yes. hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me? I hear oh, you yes. also, Chick. So you guys are moving down to the well, men's room. I want to tell you something. Um, our, kind of like a our radar gun. Our crew member is... Uh, Dressed in a rape. <laughs> I see he's in a poncho, in a and uh, you know you take every precaution because <laughs> these guys you don't know where it's going to go. Yeah. No names. I hope you don't get that bifurcated thing. You know. <laughs> we have set up the whizzo meter, oh, Christy. It's just kind of like a radar gun for urination. Kind exactly. of, but they don't yes. use radar. No. Okay. It uses a little here? wheel that you yeah. spin. We're like going a in the minutes. We're going in. <laughs> Uh, you two are gonna. You, um, are you two Tom, gonna whiz together at the same time? No, no, no. no, no. Tom is at the. Uh, I'm urinal. at the urinal. Where's he Chick? Is, uh, can you? Can, do you want? Do you have the tester? Should we test it one time first? I have a squirter bottle with water in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna squirt. The, this is a really heavy squirter. I don't think any human being could do. Okay, I'm squirting, and the whizzo meter is reading 10, 14, 8. Uh, looks like um, the total readout, uh, 14 was the high. You know, you really didn't even squeeze it. Give I was going to say. Okay, you're coming out of a squirt bottle. Are you sure it's not on spray? Out of it. Oh, my God. There, there's, uh, it got up to 80. you got to wow. squeeze it, Tom. Yeah, that's what. Oh. 80? 80. I can't go up to 80. Well, I know you can't go up to 80, but you were, like, doing this like a little Nancy guy. I was making a little wheel go around. Yeah. Okay, okay, Flo Max. We'll see how you do. Okay, I'm going to, so the way it works is after you kicked it again, and uh, it's um, reading out 50. So it, is, it, it works like a radar gun. Right. Okay. Okay, I am going to. Uh, Are you going to unzip and uh, see what you got? He's, he's reaching yeah. in. Yeah, now, has anybody, we've not tried this with, no, I don't want to splash in anybody here. Oh, he's, well, let's um, hope not. I'm getting ready to go. Okay, I'm going, I'm ripping it here. This oh, is the best God. I can do. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> this is no good. What kind of there speed? Are taking, there are people taking pictures. <laughs> what kind of speed you got going on? I, I'm afraid there may be some additional audio. You get a warm-up lap? There may be some additional audio. <laughs> 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 yeah. so, did I, did uh, 26 was the high. I'm sorry, what? Uh, 26. 26? Oh my god, this is your prostate check. It looks what? like, and it looks like, chick, when you did it, there's, there's water all over the floor. Okay, okay, come on in, prostate king. What? Uh, okay. No, I'm not saying I'm going to do any better, but. Okay, now chick's going to get know, up I, there. I have a. I have a shy bladder. Well, I'm not going to look. Oh, he's going to stand there for an hour trying to whiz because yeah. he has I've a shy bladder. His phone. He needs two hands to handle the monster. I can't. Did you find it yet? I don't know. If I just, oh. He's digging. Have you found it yet? I don't know if I can do this when everybody wants me. Okay, are you going uh -huh. yet? No. You no. haven't even started? No, I can't go. Hey, everybody turn your head. Okay, nobody look. <laughs> oh my God! I can't. Think about think about Niagara Falls. Uh huh. Think about think about wet uh, things. Think about Niagara yeah. Falls. Think, think about, about water. Turn the faucet on. I have to turn the faucet. What? Oh, Jeez. Why? You oh. don't want to stay there. Works for my girls. Here we go. Oh, yeah, oh, he's finally started. Okay, there we go. Uh huh. He's going. What kind of? Well, I can't get the wheel to turn. <laughs> now, no, now if, if there's any kind of gaseous emission, it voids the readout. Forty-six, readout. fifty-four, fifty-six. Oh. <laughs> So, okay. well, did you get 56? What, what, what is the readout? 56. 56. Ooh, chick. Very and, uh, Tom, you had 20? 24. Mine was, what was mine, 20-something? 20, 20. Wow. Maybe you should um, have your prostate checked. Are you, still, are you still going? Yeah, I told you I had to go, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're sorry. Well, the test is well, over. Maybe we, can do, maybe we can do a commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> the, the camel releases. <laughs> I'm still going. Okay, wow. uh, anybody else have to go? Well, we've got the whole Would you wait? Here. I'm not done yet. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So the whizzo meter, let me see the readout. Oh, the, the okay. key is to get the wheel to spin. Sometimes you, okay. your aim is, is a lot, a uh, key to it. You oh, probably I see. didn't hit the wheel. You have to aim? You have yeah. to aim. You can't you arc it in there, Tom. I question for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's going to take this thing out of the urinal? <laughs> oh, well, well, I'm sure we can find there. an intern Why to not? do that for us. Do we have any interns? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we're heading back in.
Jesus, we're all on low carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. A little bit. <laughs> we want to look good in the painting. <laughs> By the way, I should mention I'm on my way to Louisville, Kentucky. To when are you going to start there? I'm going to start there Wednesday night. Well, you sure are early. I'm way early. You taking a kind no, of Stoga wagon I'm there, going, Sam I'm Houston? Going back, I'm going back home. Okay. Well, that's a heck a of a way later, to get to Louisville. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a roundabout way. Mm -hmm. but it's, it's that working. wife, isn't it? She's making you come back home. No, she isn't making me come back home. I, I, I want to go back home because of my wife. Perhaps. He likes his wife. You know, I actually have a... Who doesn't? It's... Yeah, we all hey. like it. <laughs> okay, all right. Look yeah. at him. We can't wait till you go to Louisville. <laughs> We're all going to Chicago. Yeah. Haven't you seen, I haven't you seen his, on 65? <laughs> if I wasn't such a haven't you seen her website? <laughs> Theothermen.com? Oh. oh, yeah. Yikes. <laughs> Let's put that up right now. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I'm just I'll kidding. I'll call your bluff. Yeah. Tim Cavanaugh is our guest. You need a password, wife. Tim. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and a charge card. Yeah. You can use Christie's. <laughs> Hi, this is comedian Sean Moore. <laughs> hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hola. There's Pat Godwin. Hello. In the performance room. We'll get a song out of you this time, huh? Sure. All right. Did you hear that, Tom? I might have a song coming from Pat. There's Josh. Hello. Ace Cosby's here. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. Uh, now, uh, uh, Pat, you feel like doing a little something for us right now? Well, I got a sad character in here uh, that uh, wants a little time. Oh, oh really? Oh. Yeah, all right. It's me, Mick Jaguar. Oh, oh hi, Mick. Lost my gig, you know. Yeah. Gardner Minshew, yeah. check local listings, went off to... Well, Gardner the Minshew uh, was, a, was a Jaguar, then he was an Eagle, then he was a Colt. Now he's going to be a Raider, Ace's favorite team. Gardner Minshew, my favorite player in the NFL. And every day, that, you know, that he would play and do great, I would come in and do a song, and uh, that's kind of right. gone now. He's a... Uh, Back up out with the Raiders. So I think I'll, tr I'll try this. Just okay. I'm going to do it a little slower, though. All right, just see if it'll work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all right. It feels all right. Gardner Minshew went to Vegas to play for the Raiders. Gonna miss that. Wacko. <laughs> uh oh. Colts need a new QB, an agent that is free. That's Joe Flacco. <laughs> All right, see if it works. Ooh, 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 Joe Flacco. It's a little harder to sing, you know. But let's try. Ooh, 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 Joe Flacco. Yeah, not bad. Coach fans have their fears. He's the comeback player of the year, but Lord, he's 39. He doesn't live in a hippie van. He's a family man, that Joe Flacco. Not really a character, you know. Yeah. He's got four kids and a lovely wife. His hair's short on top and short on the side. <laughs> There's no party tonight. We have a game tomorrow. Woo! <laughs> All right, keep it down, boys. What's the matter, man? So what, the guy's bland. The Colts are dying to meet you. We're going to bring a case of Pellegrino, skip the beer, broads, and vino. You know, uh, you're married. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Flacco. Oh, oh nicely works. done. Yeah, there you go. go. Quite the same. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Very nice, very nice. Lots of quarterbacks going lots of different places. Yes, sir. We covered that already. NFL but, free agency. But there's more in the world of sports? Uh, we've got this uh, one thing right here. Stupid world record. The daughter of the world's fastest window cleaner. <laughs> has offed herself, I assume. <laughs> has joined her father. <laughs> that is breaking, the funniest thing I've ever heard. By breaking her own Guinness World Record. <laughs> All right. According to the BBC, Ms. Alicia Burroughs managed to clean three standard office windows mm -hmm. in 16.13 16 seconds, beating the previous women's record by 0.15 There's a women's seconds. record for this. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> she logged her record-breaking time at Manchester's cleaning show. <laughs> Wow. In the UK. Well, that's going to be. Boy, I bet the hookers love that convention. Maybe oh, I, yeah. Hey, cleaning I, show's coming next weekend. You'll go so Lube it. up. Maybe I don't want to <laughs> move to London. Her father, known as 
Terry Burroughs, but his nickname is Turbo. Mo has held the male title for cleaning windows for 29 years and has set the current record of 9.14 seconds. He's held that since 2009. Hmm. Terry said he was elated and almost broke into tears, and I'm going to add very proud. He heard his daughter's <laughs> window cleaning world records. Well, that's nice. Uh, All right. Mm. She's a badass. Yeah. She's got w w Windex in her veins, Josh. Mm, boy. <laughs> oh, she is uh, uh, real, really doing something. Uh, no boy. mention of how big the uh, windows just windows a are. standard. Was it the window cleaning cleaning convention? Is what that was what it, it, it No, just a cleaning convention. Cleaning convention. That's what it was. Ah, oh, here they are holding their holding their weapons. Their golden squeegees. Yeah, uh -huh. they're squeegees, all right. <laughs> boy, oh, boy. Get them over to my house. Oh, these are big windows. Wow. <laughs> I, I take it back. <laughs> that's that's fast. Is that right? <laughs> there, there she is. Just, the squeegee on her. Uh, some photographer taking a picture, probably thinking, uh, maybe I should have taken that gig in Ukraine. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> a little more exciting. What a job that scaffolding window cleaning is, huh? No boy, joke. Boy. Ah. You really... Got Ugh. to not mind heights. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. You really Almost embrace no, them and like yes. them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they have some pretty good stories about stuff they've seen while cleaning windows. Oh, probably, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and don't they, some people dress up like superheroes and clean the windows at, at hospitals and things like that? That's real kids. fun. Yeah, yeah that's, that's cool. cool. Yeah. On my way in this morning, this will tell you how my life goes, I was listening to a station and they were playing something and they go, this was sponsored by the group that, uh, the Pipe Organs Association. Wow. Those who design, make, and maintain pipe organs. <laughs> I mean, honestly, were you listening to, like, a Christian station? No, it was, like, a classical music station. Oh, but, okay, there you but go. But how many people does that affect? Yeah, the, the <laughs> churches and, I, mean, I guess, <laughs> operas and things. I mean, it's probably big money. <laughs> it must be. Because there aren't a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can they you have imagine? their own organization. I bet it does take quite a bit to maintain a pipe organ. Of course. It they have must. a lot of cleaning those pipes. You got to clean those pipes. Uh, yeah. I bet they have really long uh, dust mops, <laughs> yeah. whatever you'd call them, Swifters, yeah. I guess, Swifters. I, I have yeah. a If there were a pipe organ, and maybe there is one, museum, I would visit it. Really? I, I think they look amazing. I think they sound cool. Okay. <laughs> I'm is that fascinated right? by them. You like them in horror movies? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got Lon Chaney sure. uh, playing, playing one. And, yeah. We had that cool story about the, um, the longest note. Remember that? There, oh, yeah. There's Isn't some, it still going? Like, what is it, 100-year piece or something? Oh, yes. 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 It's, it's, it's some organ in Europe. Oh, odd. And, like, they hold one note for years, then they pick up and move the sandbag, and it's... Oh. <laughs> Remember this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's some... We uh, just had an update on that not too long ago. cage thing or something. I forget what it was. Yeah, yeah, but that's that, that'd be... They're going to have to maintain that giant organ. Now, um, uh, have we completed our sports? Yes, practice? we have. That is uh, that is sports. And remember what uh, Red Fox always says: You got to wash your ass. Just, uh, just start small and then uh, do whatever. You do. <laughs> this is what you farm it for. Wherever you go, whatever you do, always be a good sport, Christy. Doctors say a man's migraines were caused by a tapeworm larva. Oh, boy. In his brain. In his brain. The 52-year-old consulted doctors about changes in his migraines over four months. He was diagnosed with neurocysterosis after the CT scans revealed numerous fluid-filled sacs in the brain and cysterosis cysts antibody tests returned positive. Oh, man. Yeah. Oof. According to the CDC, neurocysterosis is a parasitic tissue infection caused by larval cysts of the pork tapeworm. Doctors suspect he contracted the infection from his habit of eating lightly cooked, non-crispy bacon most of his life. Oh, no. Yeah. Now you're going to send your bacon back, aren't Into you? Into his brain. Yep. I like the crispy bacon, man. Man, yeah. I don't. Now I'm going to have to eat it crispy. Crispy? The you don't, you crispier like the better. Saggy better. bacon? I do. I Limp? To. Limp bacon, yeah. yeah. You do two ways? I used to. I, no. And you even like the well-done steak. You don't like the uh, crispy bacon. Huh? That's interesting. It falls apart. It does fall apart. Thank you. Yeah, but it falls apart in your mouth. It's delicious. <laughs> yeah.
Well, the man was successfully treated, by the way, with anti-parasitic and anti-inflammatory medications. So. Sure, once they can diagnose that, they, they can get rid of it pretty quick. You know, man, man, had rough. that happened, I don't know how long ago, he would have just said, well, he, 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 he's just going to have to go mad. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. That's what I they would have had to do. If I know if you get it from eating Canadian bacon, the health care treatment is free. <laughs> which is, uh, <laughs> you got to wait two years for it. you got to uh, move. It is for, yeah, but yeah, I know about that. Rare bacon. No, thank you. No, well, no. I don't think it was rare, but it was kind of not well Limp. done. No. Well, okay, yeah. No, you yeah. Gotta, cook, gotta cook it. It's pork, for God's sake. Another health news, dermatologist. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Dermatologists warned that contact with fresh limes, celery, or figs could be a bad combination for some people's skin. Some people break out in what is nicknamed margarita rashes, hmm. especially if they are skin sensitive to certain fruits or vegetables and then get sun exposure soon after. The medical term for those outbreaks is photocontact dermatitis. So is this together? You have to have lime, celery, lime, celery, no, no, and figs no. all together? Because that's, <laughs> that's a weird odd, combination. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you make it with that? That's an awful I'm bloody stealing Mary. Stealing from the produce <laughs> section yeah. as quickly as possible, running out. <laughs> Little Jimmy Buffett there. Yeah. Kind of a Margaritaville thing. Uh, coming up, we're going to talk with comedian T.J. Miller. Oh. Looking forward to that. And would you like to talk with Marilyn Monroe? We're going to tell you about how that's uh, happening in the world of, of course, of AI. We'll see what that's all about coming up. But uh, right now. We're going to uh, find ourselves in the confines of the McGee household. That's right. The Simply Safe home security system that I installed myself protects my compound night and day. Experts and customers love Simply Safe for their comprehensive protection. I do too. It was just named Best Home Security System of 2024 by U.S. News and World Report and Best Customer Service in Home Security by Newsweek. Its advanced technology protects every room, window, and door of your home cameras. Those high-def cameras keep watch for activity 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day from Simply Safe. There's no need for a long term contract ever. You'll get the emergency response you need at half the cost of traditional home security. And you can install it yourself or the technicians at Simply Safe would be glad to do it for you. You can protect your home today, and Bob and Tom Show listeners, of course, have a special deal 20% off any. New Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect monitoring. Just visit simplysafetom.com. That's simplysafetom.com. Remember, there's no safe like Simply Safe. Thank you very much, Chick McGee. Once again, uh, a little bit of Al Jackson coming up, comedian Al Jackson and comedian T.J. Miller, and also some cool science news and uh, eagles, parrots, sheep, crocodiles, all coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. The best comedian. Tim Allen is here. He goes, you know, oftentimes, you hear this a lot, yeah, oftentimes the technology they learn here at the race is translated into your family car. Uh-huh. I went, yeah, right. This year, the Chevy's offered the new, the Indy Celebrity. <laughs> a 900 horsepower celebrity wagon. <laughs> so I'm like, gosh, George, this thing's really got some pickup, doesn't it? <laughs> I got to the kids to school in about six seconds. <laughs> We're having lapping practice next week with all the other girls' PTA. She's running the offy. I'm doing the Buick. And Betty's got the Chevy high tech. I pulled the trailer right out from under the boat, George. This baby's got some guts to it. Love Sears, do you? Mm. This craftsman tool department makes my nipples rock hard. <laughs> <laughs> She always figured we should grunt like pigs. Uh -huh. The little primate you are. Don't speak to your mother. You grunt like the pigs you are. <laughs> <laughs> Ever try to take a steak away from your husband? Here, honey. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we're trying to grab meat from a man more, just like dogs. <laughs> I like going through the house rewiring stuff. That's my favorite thing. One of those big tool belts. Yeah. Two cordless Makita drills hanging low. Yeah. <laughs> but you gotta know how to wear it, otherwise your butt crack shows. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, what is that? A pencil hole over there, Bob? I'm gonna hike that up. I got some spackle. I'll uh, I'll figure out that butt crack. <laughs> Really, I got some dap butt crack filler putty back here. I'll just fill that crack right in there, Bob. I got kids eating food in this kitchen. Get out of here. Go to minor me a dovetail out there or something, Bob. I'm, I just cruise around my house like Bob Vila, you know, with a bad headache. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just looking for stuff. I look at I notice Grandma's easy lift chair isn't moving quite as quick as I'd like it to. So I pop down the hardware store, pick up a compressor, some hose, some coal. Wax cable. I wire that sucker up. I forget Grandma lost some weight in the years I look at. Got the 140 pounds a little too high, didn't it, Grandma? <laughs> Shot that bitch halfway across the kitchen there. <laughs> Doilies following her. <laughs> Sorry, Grandma. I'll dial that baby down as soon as I rewire Grandpa's hearing aid. <laughs> I got a preamp on that son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Comedian yeah. Tim Allen. Oh, God. Now uh, that's manly. Yeah. Yeah. Presiding over a symbolic condom roast in his Catholic Church's parking lot a in Waterbury, roast. Connecticut, mm, yes. I love those. The Reverend Joseph Looney protested. Mesquite condom roast. <laughs> mm, very tasty. <laughs> I'd like that black and please. It makes it look bigger. And they look, <laughs> <laughs> they look so good at a shish kebab, too. A little pepper, a little bell pepper. Mm. Condom, <laughs> tomato. Mm. <laughs> What's the name of this reverend? Reverend Joseph Looney. I'm not kidding. Oh, no. Unbelievable. I'm Casey Kasem. <laughs> I don't think so. American Top 40. Yeah. Is it just my imagination or is my head just a bit too big for my body? <laughs> <laughs> and here's my wife, Karima Kasem. Show him the Top 40, honey. <laughs> hey, hi. I'm Tom. This is Chick. That's Josh. And this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston. The Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guest Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth Horns Plus. Do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right. It all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston or D, come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th. That's a free show and then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oscar, Willie Griswold. All hosted by Tom and Christy. Aww. Tickets on sale now and they're going fast. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See, See you there! there. has decided to alter its annual migratory route to enjoy a little golf. Okay. I, I get it. I got, I got one. Cuckoo. 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 Eyebrow dandruff. That's yeah. disgusting. Is that, is that a thing? I'm not proud of it. There that's, was, that's why would you, why would you bring that up on the air? That's I didn't. It was Christy did. It was said in oh, confidence off sorry. the air. Yeah. Don't ever say eyebrow dandruff in front of a potential lover. Oh. oh. oh okay. Hey, look, ladies. If I'm on top, you might get sprinkled on. <laughs> well, let it snow. Well, if you're on top, well. yeah, I'll just let everybody else finish that. Oh, I see. Oh. If you're on top, you got about eight eight seconds. Seconds to live. Is that it? I wouldn't say eight. If you're on top, Godspeed to your ribs, ladies. Is that what we're getting at? Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom show. I still uh, this this is my I love I love all the music. But this is my least favorite, I think. The, oh, thank you for pointing that out. Little Tico uh, Tico Taco or whatever this is. Got a little uh 
This doesn't make you want to move your butt a little bit? No. Yeah, it's got a nice, a loungy. Yeah, yeah. see, opinions vary. Christy, Christy's doing her chair dance. What might be in a Vegas pool? Oh. So, wading up to a, uh, a, a in-water blackjack table? Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> That's what this music kind of makes you think of. They have those in-water bars, and you notice those people never get up. <laughs> oh. That's right. Well, you're insinuating they're peeing right there. Oh, it's insinuating. It's <laughs> you hope they're just peeing. Right? Oh, man. Right there, Tom? There was that urban legend that there was a chemical they could add to a pool that if people peed, it would come out like the ink on a squid yes. or something. Uh, right. That would be great. Yes, but, uh, it would be funny. I mean, who hasn't uh, recently? Have they ever done an accurate uh, percentage of how many people pee in pools? And I think I, everyone's peed in a pool. I, I think it's got to be, yeah. Everyone. No matter if they say they right? haven't. Have I, even, ever, I bet the Queen of England probably let one rip at one point. Have you ever? <laughs> probably did some probably kind of a, a gag like, too. Philip, Philip over here, I think I dropped my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> it's pee water. <laughs> <laughs> and you got it on you. You ever urinated in a pool? I'm sure you. Oh, constantly, yeah. constantly, constantly, right. absolutely. Okay. All right. In the shower every morning. Just well, you peed in a pool one time, right? But you uh, you got thrown out of the party, didn't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it's better if you're in the water instead of standing <laughs> on the edge of the pool pissing right in. Yeah. Right, right. uh, the diving board, d d real no no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. No. Now uh, uh, we have uh, Christy Lee at the uh, at the news desk. What's going on over there? Former President George H. W. Bush's speedboat went up for auction and sold recently for four hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars. The thirty-eight foot long speedboat named Fidelity. Is it Fidelity 5? What's a V? Five, 5. 5. Boasts three Mercury outboard engines and is emblazoned with a presidential seal. Cool looking boat. Proceeds of the sale will be used to expand offerings at the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library and Museum. Mm, okay. <clears throat> they're, uh, not, they're not saying who bought it. I mean, obviously, it, it, the 450 is a little much for... They're overpaying for it because it's uh, yeah. George Bush's boat. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, see, I would not know that. I, I it's got a well, the presidential seal. To that the kind triple, of, uh, the oh. triple motor. What is it? Triple eleven. Room. Triple uh, outboard. I don't know what? Uh, it's a Mercury. Oh, oh I'm sorry. One. Crazy about a Mercury. Oh yeah, it's not a Chris you... Craft. That's what a Chris Craft sounds. Like. Mercury is more of a hum. So would could you drive this thing, or would you put it in a museum or something? If we had a Mercury motor, could we tell the difference between that and the Evinrude? Yeah, you could, especially three. Oh, really? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Between an Evan Rood and a Mercury? Yeah. Probably not. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that would be tough. But, yeah, the old, old-fashioned old Craft. those are inboard engines. Now, uh, I imagine that, um, I know one of his previous uh, boats, Fidelity, whatever, three or four, is in a museum. Ah. Uh, oh. I hope whoever bought it's going to drive it around. Wouldn't that be cool? Man, that presidential seal has got to be kind of cool. Yeah. You know, I mean, good. that's not something everybody has. can get and has. Yeah. Not, oh, there it is. I don't think you could get arrested oh, for having it. Oh, it's a center console. That's like a fishing boat. Be cool. There that is go. a cool boat. Yeah. So you don't have to... $435,000 for that? It seems to me... <laughs> Like, you would have to take off the presidential yeah. seal to be able to own that. Yeah. No. I was wondering, doesn't it, that doesn't seem... Right? I like was going to say, I don't know that anybody could just get that and put it on something. Why not? You're, be, you're well, not, you're, not the, you're not the president. But you, I could see you owning this boat and go out in international waters and cause an international <laughs> incident or something. <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't know who it was. I like it. It's understated. We saw the seal. It must have been the president. Yeah. Okay. Now, answer me this. Can't even lay out if, on that boat. I believe, isn't any airplane that the president's on automatically designated Air Force One? That's the way I understand it. What about boats? What would Marine, that be? Uh, Marine One, right? Something like that? Yeah, no, no Navy that's, a one. that's a helicopter. Yeah. Right? Navy One? I don't know. I mean, would it, if, the, if the president was out on a speedboat, would that count? Coast Guard One, that could be. I don't know. Well, but oh, I'm sure. It suppose. must. Oh, I don't know. Shut. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> I think it could be Marine One. I mean, is it considered bicycle one? Marines in the, in the Navy. <laughs> I know that uh, uh, that particular Bush, George H.W. Bush, 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 uh, Bush <laughs> excuse me. Hey, Butch. We didn't determine You think he would have uh, gotten elected had his last name been Butch? Fair question. Didn't we just, was yesterday we decided that uh, George Butch would be a good name for a a drag queen, drag yeah. Queen. Yeah. 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 Especially, I really like if it's George H.W. Bush. <laughs> yeah, that'd be They just went the full. 
Are there drag queens who do presidents? Oh, there must be. And yes. insist on calling me Mr. President. I have stuff. not seen yeah. that, but I would. I'm sure there's that a would Dick be. Nixon, that kind of thing. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. Like George Washington. Yes, very nice. Because, uh -huh. yeah, as you know, one of my favorite things at Disney World is the Hall of Presidents. Mm. So, uh, which a lot of people go to because it's air conditioned. But, it does uh, feel good in there. And as uh, years ago, I stated how much I wanted to put up the Hall of Vice Presidents. <laughs> <laughs> much lesser visited building, I would think. <laughs> maybe yes. at Epcot. Well, as long uh, as it has air conditioning, people will go. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to really have gone through everything at Disney to have to go see the Hall of well, Vice kids. Presidents. <laughs> no, sorry, we're not doing roller coasters. We're going to go listen to Dan Quayle misspell potato. <laughs> <laughs> A couple quick things I want to mention. We're going to be on the road. Uh, Cincinnati, getting ready for opening day, will be live starting at 6 in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time, from Nation Kitchen and Bar at the Bet MGM Sportsbook at The Banks. Just steps from the front gate of the Great American Ballpark. Admission is free. Space is limited. Hope to see you there. Special thanks to 92.5 The Fox. And while I'm at it, we're going to be on the road in Charleston, West Virginia, Friday morning, April 5th. We'll be at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center with a special show there that there that evening, excuse me, uh, courtesy of Rock 105. And by the way, the morning show will feature Duke Tomato the, and the uh, Brass to Mouth Horns, et cetera, et cetera. The live comedy show that evening will be Patty G, let's see, Willie G, Jeff Oskay, Josh right over there, and Christy and I will be your host. Do you think we can talk Duke into staying for that show Friday night and just be like the stand? The, you know how sometimes in old school comedy shows they would have a band in the background? Like just kind of oh, you know, yeah, as we came on and as we yeah yeah. Do you think we could? Would you pay them an extra five thousand dollars to do that? <laughs> well, see, the problem with that is the problem with that is then during your set, people start looking at them going, "Why is the trumpet player scratching his balls?" Oh, that's, that's oh no, they'll that, be laughing. That, that's that's PG. Oh, yeah. Well, can yeah. we just pull the curtain a little bit so they'd close? Oh them no, they, they want to see the band howling with laughing. Right. Right. You got you got to work the band because they've already heard the stuff. You got to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're Carson right. Carson always played to the band. Yeah, those were, that was the best audience. <laughs> work the band. Well, yeah, well. You guys sleep the, over there? Take the, a break. The uh, band liked it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In any event, uh, George H.W. Bush's speedboat, 435000 I'm not sure what a, a regular version of that boat would go for. I don't think that. I mean, sure. It's not, I don't it, think it's it, that far off. Really? It's not that that's I don't know what boats cost. I have no idea. It's Locked insanely, it can get crazy. Well, and then you got to <laughs> insure them. And, yeah. ah. hmm. They made a video, did you see the sale for sale video? They had a lesser, wow. uh, what's her name? A lesser Tracy Chapman song, Fast Boat. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was. He had a fast uh, Yeah, boat. very few people realize. But he passed away. Uh, she was a big, big fan, big fan of, uh, of boating, you see. The kids don't want the maintenance. Throw <laughs> 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 the first pitch in. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we have to return to. Um, dear Tom, this oh. email starts. Uh, I know how Tom loves competitions like this. Each year, this is from Brian, my kid's school has a contest to see who can memorize the most digits of pi. With the elementary school winner and the middle school winner each getting to throw a pie in the face of the principal. Oh, that okay, is so that's awesome. funny. Yeah, yeah that Isn't is this cool? Funny. Perfect for Pi Day, right? I wanted to make Tom's head explode and let him know that both my son and daughter will be competing this year. They both won their grade contests. With 150 and 305 digits, amazing places respectively Holy for pie. Gosh, that is um, something. This is from Brian. They got some good memorization skills. I Man. guess. No and thanks. Then they throw pie in that. Well, that's the best part. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're going to do that, uh, have you ever had a pie in the face? Never had a pie in the face. Yeah, I did Never. that all day twice for filming some stuff. It's Ooh. yeah. Stings, you see. <laughs> oh, does it? You oh, you use, hit, anything hits your nose like that. Want to use whipped on. cream? Oh. Okay. Uh, now, uh, back to you, Christy. An AI technology firm reports you will soon be able to have a conversation with a realistic digital avatar of Marilyn Monroe. Hmm. The company known as Soul Machines recently unveiled Digital Marilyn. Digital Marilyn allows users to interact in real time using advanced natural language processing, deep learning, and GPT 3.5. All right. I don't think conversation is really what most folks would want to do with their <laughs> Marilyn Monroe avatar. Yeah, what are you going to talk? Yeah, well, I, what? Seems your life was sort of sad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
Can you illuminate that Are a little bit? Right? Yeah. What was JFK like? <laughs> <laughs> Who would want to do that? Uh, I keep saying that. And how much does eventually? It I think cost be, money. I'm sure. And I think eventually it'll be a porn thing. You put on the glasses and uh, what's that called, Josh? Uh, VR, VR, yeah. Yeah, virtual, yeah, virtual reality, reality yeah. and I think it'll be. They'll have to go to the estates of some of these people and say, "Look, we can." They go, "No, we don't want to. We don't want to tarnish her memory." And they go, "Well, it's ten million dollars." Well, uh, how do you memory, spell yeah. tarnish? I yeah. <laughs> where, where do I sign? Um, yeah, it's uh, going to be. It's all going to be out there. Uh, a story we didn't get to while you were gone last week. Rita Moreno is in the news too. She says she wants dated Elvis Presley to get back at Marlon Brando. She revealed the antidote during a recent interview with People in Espanol, saying that during her relationship with Marlon Brando, she one day found some ladies' lingerie in his house. The 92-year-old actress says, I went home weeping, crying, so hurt and furious, I adored and worshipped him. So the very next day, she received an unexpected call from Presley's manager, who we all know is Colonel Tom Parker, who told her the singer had spotted her and liked what he saw. He saw her at the commissary at 20th Century Fox. Is this how Elvis worked? Hey, Pat, uh, what did Colonel Tom Parker say to Rita Moreno exactly? <laughs> you got a huge Johanna dog. <laughs> you want to be... You want to meet the Elvis? Recalling the lingerie incident, she accepted, adding she dated Elvis several times, although she found him sweet but boring. Of course, Brando found out and was angry. It was so wonderful. Wow, she sounds like a wonderful person. Why does what a colossal <laughs> bitch. We're... Was she and Brando together? Yeah. Oh. By the way, Rita, there's a chance that that sexy lingerie you found at Brando's house <laughs> was Brando's. Was Not necessarily. Well, he <laughs> wasn't necessarily gay, but he was a bona fide weirdo. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. You, <laughs> who's to say what he was doing? Yeah. Isn't he wearing a dress in uh, uh, Dr. Moreau? Uh, yeah, essentially. It's a moo moo. Or... That could be the worst well, movie he was ever huge, made. It's a really, really terrible Very movie called. Fat. The Missouri Breaks. Did you ever see that? Sinatur. Yeah, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Him and Nicholson. Oof. I, uh, how could that be bad? What yeah, happened, right? it, it's, you think, how could it yes. be bad? It's terrible. Isn't that amazing? They messed that up. <laughs> Try See if you can get through it. I don't think you can. Um, <laughs> Dennis uh, Hopper have something to do with it? Seems like he would. I, I don't think so. But, uh, <laughs> I, I found the story about like the... You, you, you were talking about camera. organs. Organs. Uh, the the uh, musical. Pipe or, organs, Yes. Yeah, I, I was incorrect when I thought the piece was 100 years. It's a 639-year-old musical piece from John Cage. My goodness. Um, it's uh, entitled As Slow as Possible. What? Yeah. Um, it's an experimental piece. They started playing it in 2001, and it's still on. It won't end till 2640. This well, is, well, this, well. This is assuming <laughs> that civilization yeah. and or the Earth is still around. Um, according to the BBC, crowds gathered to witness the chord change. God. <laughs> they gathered. Oh, have you seen how, how it works? How boring does it, your they have life like, have really? to be? They have, I guess they're sandbags, and they put them on the keys, and it, and then the note just plays for hmm, whatever they book, months pick or them years. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd like to see this crowd if yeah you will. me too <laughs> this you reminds there. me of of the the plant that blooms that stinks uh, oh yeah the corpse flower these i bet it's the same <laughs> same crowd of people yes yeah yeah like like in, in three and a half years pat there's a chord change we may want to head up there now oh wait a minute oh, in fact i think the next one is the beginning of the hook <laughs> pre-bridge where is this in england is that where you said? Um, I, it's somewhere in Europe. Oh. I, I don't have the whole thing here. Uh, Foolish. I think it's in Area Germany. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, this is happening as we speak. You've got plenty of time before the next note change. Chick, uh, uh, one of your friends comes up to you and goes, Hey, uh, I'd, lo I'd love to take you to this thing. Uh, it'll be great. It's uh, some mm -hmm. experimental music. Yeah. Are you immediately? <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Immediately, I'm out. You just walk away. Yeah. <laughs> I can't listen to it on my phone. I don't want to go see it in person. I can tell you that. A helicopter in the Philippines forced to make an emergency landing recently after becoming entangled in a kite string. The incident occurred last week in the town of Gwendolman. Andrew Bayhorn Lacar, who witnessed the scene, said the nylon of the kite got caught by the top portion of the control propeller. The aircraft landed in a vacant lot. There was no damage found, and the helicopter was deemed airworthy, so everything was okay. Coincidentally, it was a kite with uh, Kobe Bryant's picture on it. 
Wow. That's cold. <laughs> he died in a uh, coffee. Yeah, yeah, he, he was sure very did. much aware of that. I think his daughter may have been with him. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Did you see that there there are a bunch of, uh, there are two or three um, misprints on a, the uh, statue they just put up of him outside the center? What? I didn't see that. It's a things. great statue. Like K-O-B-Y? No, no, no. no. Oh. It's a, a decision is misspelled down in the, and a couple oh. of the other players' names are misspelled. Oh, my goodness. Like yeah. Well, didn't they, didn't they uh, fly big balloons on cables? During World War II to prevent aircraft from entering spaces. Oh, yeah. They sure did. So, I'm... I'm huh. Does it say, by the way, in that case, was the kite okay? It doesn't. It mentioned okay. the kite. The I Kobe don't know. Bryant kite? No, no, no. Would you get off that? <laughs> That's right, right. Well, couldn't they, uh, in the World War II, couldn't they, when the balloons were up there, couldn't they send up those planes, like in the cartoons, they have the scissors on the end of the plane? So <laughs> yes, they, Batman has that. Yeah, they go and he just pulls it <laughs> on, on the bat wing, yeah. Yes, he does. He sure does. <laughs> Giant scissors? Yes. yes. in the front of the bat wing, and it cuts these yes. uh, floats, these That was in the uh, Nicholson movie, yes, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, he cut the floats loose. Yeah. Wow. Yep, that's true. Well, that's <laughs> fascinating. I have no Damn idea. right. Yeah, give no, me that scissor plane. We'll no, get rid of these balloons. No idea. Um, now, uh, you mentioned uh, Red Fox earlier. Yep. Uh, the the great comedian and actor. Um, and became, he had those underground records. They were called party albums back in the day. Mm -hmm. And then he became very well known with the primetime hit show called Sanford and Son. Here's a little bit of that music. Quincy Jones. Great stuff. So you think that's a bass harmonica? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I can't figure it out. Somebody did oh. send that to me on Twitter. Hold what on. it was? There is a guy, and you guys are going to... Chick, you're out of your mind. He plays a baritone saxophone through a traffic cone. Oh, really? And it's the baddest ass thing you've ever heard in your life. That's interesting. I, he's on uh, the internet every now and then with a new video. I don't I, know how he does it. I've seen a trumpet player use a uh, the end of a plunger. That to, makes sense. Kind sure. of a wah wah yeah. thing on a on well, a sure. trumpet. This According guy with the trumpet. saxophone, it's wonderful. It, bo, 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 wow. bo, bo, <laughs> but it gets really deep through the traffic cone. It's really it's bad. That's cool. I don't know if Anita knows what she's talking about, but she said yes. Please say tell them it's a great the great harmonica is a bass harmonica widely pop widely popular in the '60s when the country shows started to become popular, like Green Acres, Petticoat Junction, and et cetera, et cetera. Interesting. So, hmm. Uh, there are there are really um, <laughs> I can't even get that one. <laughs> they're twice as big as a toaster. <laughs> 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 Unbelievable! Well, you gotta have a <clears throat> big big mouth to wrap it around. I'll that go baby. try to find if we can find the the uh, audio the, the saxophone player playing through the traffic well, cone. It's we hilarious. Have, we have a news story about red foxes coming up. Not <laughs> Mr. the great Mr. Red Fox, but here's a little bit of a. Here's a little bit of Red Fox. He had two good buddies. One guy, he was a practical joker, so he bought one of those rubber dolls. You know, they sell them in the porno stores. Maybe you got one. And you blow them up, and they life-size dolls. You know, you put a little grease on them. And he bought one of these dolls, greased it, and put it in his bed and put the cup over it. He called his buddy and said, man, I got a chick over here. She's too much for me. I can't, can't handle it by myself. He said, hurry on over here. Before he could hang up the phone, his buddy was coming to the door. He said, where is she? I said, she's in the bedroom. His buddy went in the bedroom. He's in the bedroom about one minute. And he came back outside. He said, man, where'd you meet her? His buddy said, what happened? He said, man, what a freak. I bit her on the neck, and she farted and floated out the window. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a freak. And that was the, that's the cleanest thing <laughs> from that Red Fox collection. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Kobe Bryant would have enjoyed that show. Oh, Jesus, would you give that up? <laughs> My God. Uh, 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 take it from me. You're going to get a talk. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, coming up, we have uh, the reason we played that Red Fox piece. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Catch any part of the show you missed later today. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time.
<laughs> Excuse me. Are um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We we don't need you, man. I uh, look. There's only room for one of us. <laughs> That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package. So try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Story out of Japan. You about, started <laughs> about a product that uh, they sell. Um, these they're called panty scrunchies. Right. Here's the story. Um, it's in Japanese. Apparently, it's pantsu sushu or shushu s h u s h u, and which translates according to this news account as panty scrunchies. They're tiny panties that, when tied, they turn into scrunchies. And according and, to this, they're just over six dollars American. And I looked at those online, mm -hmm. and I and I think I said even back a couple of weeks ago, I go, well, that's just like every other pair of thongs in my drawer. You could just make any pair of so if you were in a, in a pinch, a, a scrunchie. In a pinch, if you needed to have a, a ponytail holder, I could grab a pair of. And as I point out, you'd be like a slutty magician all of a sudden. <laughs> You know, just a yeah. second, honey, I'm going to get a ponytail. You reach, you reach between your legs. <laughs> Woof. Ta-da. You're the slutty magician. And uh, you, these panties are very them. large, though. Yeah, these are bigger no, These are not your panties. Can these I see them? These are mine, actually. These are yours? Yes. Are they? they have you sexy. worn those? They look good. I have never worn those. Well, you could, these would fall off. Yeah, they're... Um, they're one size fits all. Well, Thongs come that. one size fits all. They a lot. do. Yeah, they do. Unfortunately. Where do the legs go? These are confusing. That's... Me. Oh, I see. Oh, I got it. I got it. <laughs> Whoopsie. I got yep. it. There we Never go. Never seen a pair. Mm, What's going not on? Not like this. Not at this angle. Oh, I like those. They're very nice, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, they're quite comfortable. Actually. <laughs> Josh, these might fit you. These oh. these are quite roomy. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, <laughs> set yourself up for that one, pal, didn't you? I'll, uh, <laughs> you want to try them on after I'm done putting them in my hair? Sure, I'm game. You can make. You can have them if you like. You could make these into a jaunty beret. eBay here. Now you're handing out panties to guests? <laughs> All guests in the Bob and Tom yeah. show received monogram Bob and Tom. You can I do have that. Bob and Tom. I do have a well, Bob and Tom thong in here. Give you an idea. These are, oh, this is actually falling oh, off my head. Oh, yeah. Well, really you didn't something. scrunch it. Yeah, well, you you're didn't not before. making it a scrunchie. You're making it a beret. Look, That's this, totally this, different. I mean, there's room for. <laughs> Seriously. There's room for a <laughs> large woman. <laughs> a four yoker in there. <laughs> okay, make these They're into a scrunchie. one size fits all. I can't help that. His head did kind of look like an ass cheek while it was sticking out. Christy Lee now oh has her panties gosh. back. They're red, kind of frilly. Yeah, they're lace. They're reinforced they're in the appropriate areas yeah, where so there might be, you know. All you do Okay, is now Christy's making a ponytail. Christy has lovely hair. Now she's, you're going to have to like double that thing over like eight times. That right, such that's my panties. point. That's why the bigger ones, I mean the smaller Japanese panties would work better. Okay. But you could still make this work. Okay. I mean. That's I don't right. even think you would know that those were panties. Would you know? No. Turn around. Except see. for the smell. Well. Have, except for the, the smell you'd have no. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Yeah, you would never know. I said they were clean, yeah. for God's oh, sake. Sorry. They've never been worn. But yeah, then it, it yeah. just looks like a lace, like sure. a lace scrunchie. You mm -hmm. wouldn't know. It does look nice. Yeah. So, so this is a little trick now. If you're doing the walk of shame, ladies, you can uh, well, if tie you're your hair back. Or if you're anticipating the walk of shame. See, oh, so you is... have an extra pair of panties yeah. with you. Yeah, see, this is uh, thinking ahead. So you right. pull your Or if you back. have explosive diarrhea. That's true as well. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I think you're going to need a backup pair. <laughs> usually take your panties you off. Know, usually you women have... just carry them in their purse, uh -huh. but okay. I, you know, I guess you could do that. It's kind of cool. cool. Yeah. Good, to, good to know. Mm -hmm. so anybody could do it. Uh -huh. And uh, so she's right, Christy. He's right. Any any panties will work. Well, almost. I don't know if granny panties would work. Oh, but true. The yeah. The smaller, yeah. the little thong ones do. Well, good to know. Mm -hmm. That's a little. You should send that tip to Cosmo. <laughs> you could send him the video. We have a little mm -hmm. made a little video here of Christy putting on her panties on her head. I'm sure that was very exciting. <laughs> uh, so you need to use them as the hair tie before you use them as panties. I had it backwards. Yes, Tom. You don't use so, dirty panties as I see. a hair Did anybody else just see Christy shake her hair out yeah, like that? It was pretty that awesome. Slow it was pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Oh, wow.
by getting stoned. Cause, Pat, you don't have to get drunk to be an ass. <laughs> you can be an ass on your own. <laughs> A thought right. from Paul Gilmartin. Down the elevator shaft they plunged, hurtling towards their death. Their faces drawn by Edvard Monk. They smelled the devil's breath. <laughs> Your tongue, she said at number three. Let me see its size. He grinned and licked his forehead. She buckled at the thighs. <laughs> the impact satisfied them both. Police were left some clues. A smiling woman all alone in a stranger's pair of shoes. <laughs> recent marriage was a disaster. It made the wreck of the Edmunds Fitzgerald look like a fender bender. <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry to hear that. Uh, hello. And you remember Lord's famous line about uh, gun control. Ah, uh, yes. yes. It, it, the relationship taught me a lot. It mm. taught me they won't sell you a handgun if you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> How are you listening to special glasses? Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Hello, hello, hello. Tom Griswold's here, and he's uh, been re-liquided up, if you will. <laughs> Two or three cups coming in, and uh, <laughs> getting it or, or, more getting organized. He's got another cup over there already going with about a third full. <laughs> no spills today. Yeah, he's got a bottle, and did no, you just I... have a couple of co coffee cups delivered? Yeah. Is, is there just ice in one of those cups? Yes, this is ice. Okay. Oh, okay. This is tea. Yeah. With uh, organic half and half in it. That's right. <laughs> From those great hardworking farmers out there, this is delicious real cream, ladies and gentlemen. Ah. What are the two halves in half and half? Well, it's um, half ecstasy <laughs> and uh, half That's delight. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, a great question. What is it? What if just cream and milk? It's, I think it's just, yeah. I think it's like, Heavy cream and then some milk? Yeah, I think it's like uh, lighter cream. I don't know. It just, <laughs> it's half and a half. I've always called it that. And You're probably wondering to yourself, hey, Chick, I heard you talking about this guy playing the baritone sax yeah. through, a tra through a traffic cone. Hey, Do we Chick, have it? I did hear about that. Uh, that must sound amazing. Yes. Well, you'd be right. And here is the, it's the band called Moon Hooch. Great name. Here we go. <laughs> Right at the beginning, he's just playing the sax, and then he sticks it into the traffic cone when it gets real deep like that. <laughs> oh, that's great. It has that cool... Oh, there he is. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, son. Hell yeah. Yeah, so that's cool. Good. Now, um, earlier, uh, you were playing... Um, some audio uh, of a uh, of a guy whose voice is being compared to Randy Moss. Mullins, South Carolina. Can, can you feature that again? Gamecock, uh, wide receiver. He was at the combine. He uh, ran a four three forty. He's like 6'2", 225, but he's most been, he's got, he could easily go first round. But he's, uh, his most uh, identifying characteristic is he has an unusual and interesting southern drawl. He's from Mullins. South Carolina. He's a Gamecock. Went to the University of South Carolina. And his name is Xavier Leggett. And everyone assures me that this is his accent. And here he is. Oh, man, I say the deep ball, man. But uh, I really feel like any way that I get the ball in my hand, I could get it to that end zone. Get it to that in end Green zone. Bow, Alabama. Uh, <laughs> green bow, it's, Alabama. I think it's a beautiful. I it is love it. It's so sweet. Yeah. Identical to the accent Tom Hanks uses in Forrest Gump. Yeah, I, I love yeah. it too. Which he got from the little boy who played kid, yeah. the little Forrest Gump in the movie. He he copied his accent. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. that's the the movie. Uh, the, the really behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah. C can you play it again? It's, I just oh, think. Oh man, I say the deep ball, man. But uh, I really feel like any way that I get the ball in my hand, I could get it to that end zone. That's right. Mm. Really, it's just a sweet, beautiful accent. It reminded me of one of my favorite. Uh, I, I think. Just the sharpest, uh, one of the most clever pieces from uh, Tim Wilson. And it, uh, t Tim, of course, uh, from Columbus, Georgia, and had a beautiful speaking voice, beautiful singing voice, but he talked about Southern accents, and I wanted to feature that. No, Tim has his guitar out. Are you going to play I something? I hate Florida. Huh? Why? Well, because I grew well, up you're in from Georgia. Georgia. That's why. Georgia people hate Florida. Why? why? Because we grew up our whole lives wanting to go to Florida. Put a float on top of the car. Oh, my God, we're going to Florida. <laughs> Drive four hours. Get there. Do you have a hotel room? Yeah, they're $100. 
uh-huh. unless you want to be near the water. Wow. Then they're four hundred dollars. <laughs> no, we don't want to be near the water. We want to sit in a hot ass asphalt parking lot with a float on top of the car and finish up these pecan logs we got in Valdosta. <laughs> <laughs> so then a hurricane comes, they evacuate back to Georgia. Oh my God, do you have a hotel room? Yeah, they're a hundred dollars. Unless you want to be away from the water. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly we're gougers. Yeah. You're right, anytime gouging. Georgia people making money on tourism, it's gouging. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I see. And every Everybody knows when you get south of Gainesville, Florida, you're back in Michigan. Mm. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> See, the southern accent stops at Gainesville, Florida. You mm-hmm. get the panhandled North Florida accent. It's kind of like Ronnie Van Zant from Leonard Skinner. Mm-hmm. All right, man, all right, man. Mm. Y'all gonna go to Panama City, man. All mm-hmm. right, man. <laughs> and then South Georgia, they talk like Jimmy Carter. And nobody has any R's in the woods, mm. and they sound like they'll get their ass whipped, <laughs> <laughs> which was pretty much his M.O. the whole time he was president. Right. Yeah, uh-huh. 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 North Georgia, everything got an R in it. Put mm-hmm. the back door in your car there. Put the back door in there. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Alabama, you open your mouth up real wide like this and talk like this. Are y'all going on Wednesday night or Friday night? I'm not sure I may go on Friday because I've got a dental appointment on Wednesday. Uh, is Paula Dean from Alabama? Uh-huh. She's from Savannah, Georgia. Savannah, Hi, y'all. Hi, y'all. She makes me sound like a Brooklyn attorney. <laughs> <laughs> this should be the old Tolly Gavis Presley. Everybody got that little stutter in there. Good uh-huh. before I get it out. Jimmy Swaggart always sounded like he is from Mississippi, but he's actually from Louisiana. Uh-huh. With, I don't really know exactly what happened at the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Louisiana, they got the French thing. Yeah. They bought that thing from France. Oh, they just uh-huh. need a cool in by his Where you at? from right. Louisiana. Uh-huh. Okay? We, should, we ought to sell that state today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Louisiana ain't been nothing but a headache for the past 10 years. Really? It's basically a concrete bridge with water under it. <laughs> We bought Louisiana in 1803, Louisiana Purchase. If we sold it today, we could triple our money. All right. Arkansas, they talk like Bill Clinton. You can't yeah. tell if they're laughing or crying. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Cash sort yeah. of had that. He was from Arkansas, and you couldn't tell if he was happy or sad. <laughs> Tennessee, I can't do. You chew gum, talk like Charlie Daniels. Mm, okay. And he's from North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> South Carolina, you talk like Strom Thurmond. Everybody remember Strom Thurmond? He was 137 years years old in the United States Senate. Mm-hmm. That's the lovely young ladies in here today. <laughs> Strom turned out to be a little bit hypocritical on the way out. Uh-huh. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Strom mm-hmm. Thurmond, the only man in the world that could pull out a Susan B. Anthony dollar, mm-hmm. look at it and think, yeah, I slept with her. <laughs> <laughs> he could probably get that Indian woman on the Sacagawea dollar. <laughs> yeah, probably. I bet you if you check it, Bob, that's his baby she's <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> North Carolina, they talk like Andy Griffith. Oh, oh, oh. Lloyd shaved his neck. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, isn't that brilliant? Isn't that great stuff? Uh, uh, can you play the uh, football So game? wonderful. This yes. is wide receiver from the University of South Carolina. South Carolina Gamecock, Xavier Leggett from uh, Mullins, South Carolina. Oh, man, I say the deep ball, man. But uh, I really feel like any way that I get the ball in my hand, I could get it to that end zone. Oh, God, that's so beautiful. I mean, I'm going to feature something in a few minutes um, by somebody who talks somewhat like that um, uh, coming up. But first, we'll just check in with one more quick story from Christy Lee. Missed anything of uh. interest? Well, yeah, we have the bald eagle story. He's been rescued. It was stuck in a car's grill in Maryland. The Calvert County government said authorities responded to Route 4 after a driver accidentally collided with the bird of prey. The eagle not hurt, but was trapped in the vehicle's grill. I never understand how that happens. Animal control officers worked with sheriff's office deputies to free the bird and release it back into the wild. Mm, I saw the video this morning. The bird wasn't struggling. It was just like calmly in the grill. I know, but how do you get in there? Is the grill broken, obviously? I Maybe he's holding on until the car stops. Yeah, yeah, would you let go? Yeah. <laughs> we get these stories a lot about maybe he's yeah, a... animals that are in the grill and they get maybe, out. Maybe he's a stunt eagle. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's an, now, here's one uh, somewhat similar. Uh, where is this? Uh, sheriff deputy found a uh, a loose cow he'd been looking for when he rammed it with his squad car by accident. Oh, well, there it is. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Found it. <laughs> it was dark, apparently, at the time. And, uh, this, this explained it. It's on the outside of the grill, so I think maybe his talons one of his talons got stuck. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. Poor guy, but all fine. All's well. Well, this one ends. Uh, this is as written. Yeah. It says, uh, 
the car was totaled and the cow, quote, is now in cow heaven. Aww. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what happened to the cow, Joshy. What happened? The cop, he T-boned it. Oh, no. <laughs> Is that because it was a cow? They had to take it away in a paddy wagon. Yeah. <laughs> a beef paddy wagon. Beef paddy wagon, yeah. Named him uh, Barack Obrama. Oh, Bra <laughs> Brahma. Cow. See, he was cow. <laughs> no, never mind. Let's move on to another story. Uh, yeah, but we got these these birds in the... Uh, Grill a lot, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad the critter made it. Yeah, beautiful animal. I saw that picture... You know that um, prior to the accident, he wasn't a bald eagle. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah <laughs> scalped him. Uh, coming up, a, uh, another southern accent, but a song uh, that's a beautiful one. It's about uh, about getting uh, some ass kickings. Oh. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Get a look at today's show on our YouTube channel. Couldn't tell you if it's recently because the work. cable's out. Okay, um, I got a pint mail. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what's the what's the phrase of, about it? Well, yeah, sometimes there's more month than money. <laughs> there's, more, there's, there's more month. There's more month right. than money. I tell you what, uh, uh, twenty fifth coming around. We we started damn near started it. <laughs> No, I forget. No, these are, Man, these, we've been there, though. Chick, the, these are the Dickey right. twins. Your name right? Yeah, this, right. And you're, what are you, Rod Rod Dickey, and he's what is it? I'm Dick Dickey. That's Ricky Dickey. Ricky Dickey and Rod Rod Dickey. How no. you doing? No, no not Rod Rod Dickey. 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 <laughs> no, Ricky Dickey and Dickey Dickey. Yeah, I, I see. Yeah. The Dickey brothers. Where'd you get Rod? Right. No, no, the Dickey twins. Our great uncle James wrote Deliverance. Did he? <laughs> oh, James Dickey. <laughs> that's right. Fine. I, kept, I kept telling him, no, you need more sodomy. Yeah, more bunghole. You told me I couldn't say that. Can. I'm more <laughs> Josh than fire today. I'm the intellectual in the family, and uh, he's a little bit more earthy. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> we'll get back to Health well. officials in Canada. I can tell you how old you are just by smelling your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, try him. Try him. Try him. Try him. Try him. Uh, 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 you're 35. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's usually right with you in five or six years. Yeah. You know something? It's true. Hey, Josh, an honest to God, it would be worth to dress you up. <laughs> what about me? Get I want to be dressed up. Get a get a booth at the state fair. Yeah, you know, dress you up, dress you up like Ricky Dicky. Right. Get a booth at the state fair with a straight face. Have a sign up there. I can guess your age by smelling your fingers. <laughs> and, and, and see how many people. How many people would come up and go, well, this guy can't do it? And yes. God, well, what happens when he's wrong? Wouldn't they be mad? I never Who cares? Take his you're, money? You're, you're you're gonna, as Josh puts it, you're wrong. just doing it for the viral video. Uh, are you going to take money from these people or you're just doing it for free? You say, if, if, we can't, no, you, you, if we can't do it, we'll give you three bucks. Oh, or something. okay. Yeah, the thing about the Dickey brothers, they always have their trapper hats on. Yeah. And, That's right. Uh, yeah, overalls, and uh, they're, they're pretty educated. They're not, uh -huh. you know. Now, you wear the overalls with, no, with no, no underwear and no undershirt, right? <laughs> <laughs> A little side boob. <laughs> we ain't stupid. <laughs> oh, we, can, we, can we do that next summer, please? <laughs> we can yes. do it now. We can do it for Christmas. <laughs> I got chill. my trapper hat right here. What? He got me a trapper hat for my Are birthday. you going to model That's that for right. the camera? I have I put it up on my... Uh, I still remember when you squirted out of mama. Oh, jeez. I thought he's, you guys were twins. He was, he's five Yeah, minutes. yeah, I remember it. I he's was first. Five, five minutes older. <laughs> I, doctor lift me up, spank me, turn me around so I could watch old Dickie Dick come out. Yeah. I heard you almost dropped your dip. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. fell right to the floor. That's right. What a man he is. He dipped right out of his snatcher. <laughs> <laughs> I like that book, The Snatcher in the Rye. Oh, yes, yeah. Oh, That's man. quite a book. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, Christy, where were we? Uh, Health officials in okay, Canada. Chick, this add to it. <laughs> Hey, could, could we take oh, a picture of you it. in that? Because you're it's on the it's on his it's on Chick's Instagram. Josh, you need the green. Chick McGee if you want to go on that Instagram. Oh, that is one stupid looking hat. Oh, dude, trapper hats are the best. Oh, so you need a green one. I can't one. wait for it to get really one, cold. I've got a couple. Do you? Yeah, I love got them. Got this snap on the bottom. They oh. really keep your face warm. They're that, amazing. Does that the front come down? The wind chill. <laughs> 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 yes, it does. Well, you won't have to worry about <laughs> you won't have to worry about getting a venereal disease because those are vagina repellent. <laughs> Wait a minute, I can't hear you. What? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Even better. <laughs> Uh, you tell me if it looks stupid. What's the big flap know. with the fur in the front for yeah, you? Are you supposed to you... pull it down, but then you can't see? That's what I said. 
It doesn't pull down. Why oh, it's that? just it's there for fashion, Tom. Oh. <laughs> okay, because oh, that does look good. So you take this off there and it cuts you the You slaughtered some off poor off. animal from that stupid thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, right there. That's a vole. A <laughs> <laughs> and then the chinchilla's in the back. Right, right, okay. I got hey, hey, hey. That's right. Hey, hi, I'm Tom, this is Chick, that's Josh, and this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guest Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth Horns. Plus, do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right, it all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston or Deacon, Come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th. That's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold. All hosted by Tom and Christy. Aww. Tickets on sale now and they're going fast. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See you there! <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Tom, 24-7. Comedy via your computer. Bob and Tom, 24-7. This is Bob and Tom, 24-7. So back to your bedroom, Christy. We've decided uh, mm -hmm. you need to remove the crucifix from the room. Okay. I think you should just we go, go, go <laughs> all out. Go all out and do what? Well, as soon as you open the door... <laughs> Disco ball. Right. Yeah. Condom machine right there on the wall. <laughs> Incense. <laughs> you know, even better, Tom, one of those little uh, machines that dispenses cologne. <laughs> no, no. One of them is uh, condoms. The next yeah. is French ticklers. Oh, yeah. Something that looks like a cat toy. You know? All right. And then... <laughs> yeah. I think we've done all the damage we can do. Oh, no, no. We and then, oh, I know. Start it. And then, uh, then a little the little button you walk over, uh -huh. press it, and you hear just your chick going, are you ready? To <laughs> are you ready? Yeah. And then, the, then the disco music starts. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Check no action. Uh, 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 Christy. Do it, do it, do it, do it, Actually, do it. it's chicks. Where are you from, by the way? Patterson from Patterson, New Jersey. Oh, sure. That's famous. Yeah. Boy. You know, small. Sure. Thugged out town. You mm -hmm. know, it's tiny. So small, we used to get robbed by people we knew. <laughs> small. People were like, stick them up. I'm like, Andre? <laughs> I'm going to tell your mother, man. <laughs> by the way, how is Aunt Carol? How is she doing? <laughs> I come over for dinner. <laughs> Hi, this is Rodney Carrington. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Oh, hello there. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. Ace Cosby is here. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Oh, thank you very much. You just had the story about the uh, eagle that was yes. flying around, got caught on the grill of a car. Yep. And um, the eagle's okay now. Yeah, I love eagle's out back in the wild. And now. I remember we had this one. I, I don't know if you remember this one. A, uh, uh, and the, the first sentence of this is a little bit odd. A drunk cockatoo survived a high-speed crash. Hmm. With a truck. Oh, yikes. Um, and b b the uh, b bird rescue lady, uh, one uh, Wendy Warren, said the bird became intoxicated on fermenting wheat and fruit on the side of the road, which contributed to the collision. But uh, according to this account, the truck was driving at over 60 miles an hour when the sulfur crested cockatoo became wedged in the vehicle's grill. So, Oops. but this little critter's okay. But it, the funny thing is, they had to use a circular saw to free the cockatoo, and they named the cockatoo Pretzel. What was the name of uh, the Robert? Pretzel. The Robert Blake detective. Beretta. Uh, Beretta. Beretta. He had a cockatoo, right? Yeah, that, yeah. that was a big damn and white deal. White cockatoo. Right? Yeah. Fred. Was it yes. Fred? I yeah. believe you're correct, sir. Mm. I always thought it was hilarious when they'd bounce their heads up and down for no reason. That was. <laughs> <laughs> and do the, I don't know. Are those? Do they talk? Are those among the many? I don't think many? they talk. No. Okay. What are the ones? Parrots and other. 
Okay. Parrots will talk, sure. Um, but uh, a drunken cockatoo. I think wow. cockatoos can talk. Really? I think Polly, so. Polly want a gin and tonic? I, uh, mm. I'm not sure. Uh, now, uh, you... dear people, I had a girl at work come in the office and asked if I could take a look at her truck. It was making funny noise. I went out to the parking lot, discovered she'd hit a duck, and it was wedged butt first in the plastic grill where it was quacking away. Wow. Aww. <laughs> She'd driven about 15 miles when the stuck duck at about 55 <laughs> miles an hour. I removed the duck uh, easily. It was checked and eventually released back into the wild. So this lady got out of her car. Didn't walk around to the front. Didn't to walk see? to the front, evidently. <laughs> Just said my car's <laughs> <laughs> making a funny noise. <laughs> 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 Took it to the garage. Well, it was making it. I can't get it to do it again. No. It's because you're here. The standard. Now, we were talking about this um, young football player and his beautiful speaking voice, and I want you to play that one more time. Xavier Leggett from uh, Mullins, South Carolina. He's a Gamecock. He's going to be entering the NFL draft here next month. And uh, here's what he sounds like. Oh, uh, man, I say the deep ball, man. But uh, I really feel like any way that I get the ball in my hand, I could get it to that end zone. And that kind of he makes me. it sound like an adventure. I get it to that end zone. Yes, it's yeah. just beautiful. But it reminds me of the the voice of uh, Paul Thorne. Yeah, he's a great musician. If you ever get a chance to see Paul Thorne in the band, um, go so see him. Good. Just great. And um, uh, this is uh, 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 one of his fa one of my favorite songs of his. It's uh, it's called A Great Day. Have you ever had one of those days when nothing goes? Right. Your wife starts bitching about whatever it was she was bitching about last night. <laughs> so you escape into the bathroom just to sit there on your throne. But after you finish your business, the toilet paper's gone. <laughs> well, it's a great day for me to whoop somebody's ass. <laughs> It's a bad day, so you better get off my back. You might get cold cock <laughs> if you cross my path. Cause it's a great day for me to whoop somebody's ass. <laughs> well, I was running late for work. So I poured me some coffee to go And just before I had a flat tire I spilled it all over my clothes When the highway patrolman pulled up I thought that help was on the way But when he saw the tire tool in my hand He shot me with pepper spray <laughs> Well, it's a great day for me to whoop somebody's ass It's a bad day So you better get off my back You might get cold cocked If you cross my path Cause it's a great day I can sing it if you want to For me to whoop somebody's ass <laughs> When I finally made it to work I was 15 minutes late I told my boss about the flat tire But he fired me anyway So here I am out in the parking lot Just waiting by his Corvette I'm gonna give him a goodbye present That he never will forget Let's sing together Cause it's a great day for me to whoop somebody's ass It's a bad day So you better get off my back You might get cold, God <laughs> If you cross my path Cause it's a great day For me to whoop somebody's ass uh, From Tupelo, Mississippi that's Paul Thorne. What a great song. Uh, we're talking about beautiful southern voices, and Paul certainly has one. 
And uh, he's also a, a bad man. I mean, he was in the boxing ring. Years ago. Years yeah. Well, still. Great painter. He's a yeah. very talented young yeah. man. So uh, a little, little bit of Paul Thorne talking about some great, beautiful southern accents. Now, uh, coming up, we're going to talk with uh, comedian Al Jackson, comedian T.J. Miller. But real quick, we need to revisit the uh, baritone sax oh, being yeah. played through, your tra <laughs> through a traffic cone. Uh, this is actually the song I heard, not the one from Moon Hooch. I'm not sure who, who that gentleman is, but I think he's more of a prankster. Oh, okay. He will, like, come and if you want to prank somebody at a, a romantic dinner, he'll come back up behind you and play. Throw it. the traffic cone on? Throw the traffic cone on. Uh, I'm not even sure who this guy is. This, this whole thing sounds like an actual... An actual song, and there's even I think there are drums, and uh, but this is what I heard first, and it's uh, it's it's wonderful. That sound is coming from a traffic cone. I feel like I'm at a traffic light, and there's some guy behind me in a big black car, and it smells a lot like marijuana. So that's a, that's a sax through the traffic cone. That's the sax that's through great. the traffic cone. Yeah, it's got. Yeah. The, it's really hard to. Like, what is that sound? We could use it. We could do something. Oh, yeah. We gotta remember this technique. You know what we could do with that? We could, we could shake that ass, is what we could yeah, do yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah, we could do a little rap on top of that. Yeah. Josh, you feel like doing some free rap? I would uh, suck at it, real bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, don't, really... you can't do the quick rhyme? Really I could, possibly, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. No, I don't. Uh... <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You want me dropping beats? Well, I'm here to say. Yeah, no, I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he started out great. Oh, he got him. I will. I will. Yeah. I became will. A lame immediately. No, you got nervous. That <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here, here's Tom uh, rapping. I didn't get nervous. I was embarrassed. This is Tom rapping. Ready? I'm going to do okay. my impression of oh, Tom. Oh, I got you. Right. Tom rapping. Well, I, I don't know what, uh, what is this? Is this, uh, is this a cone, a traffic cone in it, and a baritone sack, a berry, if you will. The, uh, the berry, yes, the berry. The fellows in the car behind me are getting high. Uh, but when it comes to rap, you've got the wrong guy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, coming up, we're going to talk with Al Jackson. Yes, we are. Um, uh, and uh, also, as, as I mentioned, a T.J. Miller. I also want to mention the fact that the show is about to go on the road. Cincinnati opening day. And uh, new location this year. We're going to be uh, mm -hmm. having some fun. Uh, we will start at 6 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time at Nation Kitchen and Bar at the Bet MGM Sportsbook at the Banks. Just a few steps from the front gate of the Great American Ballpark. And uh, hope to see you there. It's a uh, limited admi admission, obviously, because it's going to be a small space. Uh, thanks to uh, 92.5 The Fox, we'll be joining you. And then while I'm at it, where else are we going to be? How about West Virginia and beautiful Charleston? We'll be in uh, Charleston, West Virginia, Friday, April 5th, for a special version of this show, uh, courtesy of Rock 105. And uh, we're going to be at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. And that evening, it'll be on the stage. He won't be rapping. He'll be chatting. It'll be Josh. And it'll be uh, Patty G, Willie G, Jeff Oskey, and Christian and I will be your hosts. Yeah, we will. So we'll see you then. Um, uh, coming up, that's on Friday, April 5th. Now we uh, turn to Mr. McGee once again. Bring it over here for Raycon Everyday Earbuds. That's right. Amazing audio quality at around half the price of other premium audio brands. Don't believe me? Well, how about those tens of thousands of five-star reviews online? And you know Raycons have the optimized gel tips that are designed to fit every ear ever made. And they will actually stay in your ears. Maybe you're walking the dog or you're chatting on the phone with your baby. Oh, it has eight hours. Raycons have eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life, seamless Bluetooth syncing. And you can enjoy features like their easy-to-use earbud tap functions, noise isolation, and awareness mode. And of course, yes, 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 we have a deal for you being Bob and Tom Show listeners. Just go to buyraycon.com slash Tom and get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's right. Get 20% off and free shipping at buyraycon.com slash Tom. That address one more time for 20% off and free shipping. It's buyraycon.com 
slash Tom. And coming up, uh, we have a reason to be discussing Red Fox, but not the great actor and comedian, but the actual Red Fox. Um, also, uh, we have um, a cool story about one of Saturn's many moons that scientists uh, refer to as the Death Star and the fact that there may be life there. Wow, this is very scary, Josh. Could be aliens. And also coming up, an American. He is Al Jackson. He'll be our next guest. This is the Bob and Tom Show. You don't say we didn't warn you. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or Anytime. Excuse me. Are um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I uh, look. There's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Might hear bits of conversation as you pass through public places. Some loud talker on a cell phone or a tiff at the next table. Most washed by and not remembered. But one evening last December, I passed two women talking by the front door of my hotel. <laughs> I stopped and thanked them by the curb the moment that I heard their words and said it was the finest line of eavesdrop I'd ever overheard. Their words stuck inside my head, so I wrote down the words they said. And with a hotel pen, I wrote then they had to taser her again. <laughs> Cause then they had to taser her. First time wasn't phasing her. Whatever she did, she did it twice. Who was this gal? Why weren't she nice? They zapped her once. She improvised a twitchy break dance jazzercise. Didn't get the hint. Cause then they had to taser her again. <laughs> These swirling words did not relent. Speculating about this incident. And it's gonna drive me crazy. Wondering what went wrong. Were there warrants unresolved? How much alcohol was involved? And did her stepson remember to return to the trailer the next day to feed her snake? <laughs> Cause then they had to taser her. First time wasn't phasing her. Whatever she did, she did it twice. Who was this gal? Why weren't she nice? Her hair, it spiked. She spilled her bong. They upped the volts. She soiled her thong. <laughs> Didn't get the hint, because then they had to taser her again. No, she didn't catch the drift, because then they had to taser her again. <laughs> hey, with banks. Somebody go back and feed the snake. That's a bad day. Boy, uh, soiling a thong is a bad day. Ooh, not yeah. a lot of that'll room. Well, you know what? Not, not a lot of room to catch anything. Right? Yeah, yeah. Soiling yeah. a thong isn't hard to do. Yeah.
<laughs> Hello, Michelle Kwan, are you listening? Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of loads of curvy cleavage on display. Victory and the agony of defeat. Don't touch those. Sorry. The human drama of loads of curvy cleavage on display. This is the Bob and Tom Show. No shoes, no shirt, no talent. Yes. You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. That's awful. Awful entertaining. Essential. Morning Radio. Uh, this is Bob and... Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We're eagerly awaiting hooking up with our mountain time correspondent, Al Jackson. Well, while we're waiting, I've got a couple of uh, oddball letters. All, All right. right, sir. Uh, Christy, you mentioned that you were you heard something about uh, pipe organs this morning. Yeah, I was listening to some classical music on the way in. It's a national show, I guess, and they said this portion of the show brought to you by the Association for Pipe Organ. I don't know what the actual members, I guess. Hmm. They're it's big business, you know. Yeah, design, making, and maintenance of pipe organs. I remember their tagline. Wow. Well, I've got a fine letter here from, uh, let's just say, a, a member of the ministry. Okay. He says, in two decades of ministry, I've endured two pipe organ renovations. Organ builders are practically a cult. Um, they have a perfectionism. Then he mentions my name. I'm not yes. sure why I was that. Uh -huh. um, um, uh, the uh, stare of a ticked-off drag queen. Uh, and you're almost uh, to the personality description there. The organs aren't just equipment, they're architecture. Yeah. They basically yeah. have to rebuild part of the building around them. Amazing. Whoa. The organ in my current church, 1,200 pipes. Wow. That's relatively small. Relatively small. But then he says, uh, it's huh. not the size of the organ, it's how you use it. Well, uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Sense of humor. From upstate certainly. New York. Thank you, Eric. We certainly appreciate your taking the time. Um, and uh, here's another one uh, from Nebraska. This guy sells pipe organs uh, that you'd, wouldn't be, um, you'd be amazed how many we sell. Wow. All right. There you go. Uh, do you think anyone would ever pipe came up with... Pipe organ builders, that's it, sorry. With the idea, uh, you buy a pipe organ per pipe, like you get a pipe... <laughs> a, you, 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 you buy the main unit, and then each and every month you get another yeah. another pipe. How many notes can you afford? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's just me. I bought this for my wife. She wanted all the pipes, okay? Associated me, Pipe though. Organ Builders of America, the APOBA. That's what I heard this morning. I had, I was I'd never heard of. Such I used to a drive thing. by a place all the time in Olida, Ohio. There's a pipe organ company. Wow! Really? Yeah. Uh -huh. hmm. It's a great sound. Yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah, um, and, yeah uh, nothing you can um, can't manufacture that with anything else other than well, pipe organ. Well, I, uh, I suppose there's some. Plug your phone some... in and choose pipe organ. In and, person, it it, it there really it is. is. It's a little more meaningful, sure. as, as Josh points out, and blows your way. Not some synthesized well, fake thing. Uh, money. Nice to know about. Um, now, uh, we're awaiting the arrival of uh, Al Jackson. A couple bucks. And while we do that, we'll check in with Christy Lee at the news desk. Uh, the staff at a wildlife center in Virginia have donned fox costumes in order to care for an orphaned kit. In a video posted online by the Richmond Wildlife Center. Kit, it, the uh, robot car from Night No, kit, kit is a baby fox. Huh. Oh, oh, not This is talking. a red fox. I thought, it was, I thought no. it was a baby. I thought a baby fox was called a... Foxette. <laughs> is it, it's not a Foxette, Christy? No. It's a oh, no, that's, that's Roxette. It's Fox Lane. That is Roxette. Remember yeah. Roxette? Yes. <laughs> I, I liked Roxette. Oh, they were huge. Shoot that point. No, that's ABC. No. Shoot. Uh, who's uh, Roxette? Roxette? She's was, got the look. Yeah. She's got the look, Tom. Like, Roxette? No. Nope. I uh, don't recall. I... Melissa Stanley wears a red fox mask and red rubber gloves while feeding the tiny kit from a syringe. How you doing, man? And the little <laughs> kit sits on top of a large stuffed animal fox that's supposed to look like her mother. This is, uh, if you've seen the picture, it's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> but the employees at the center are trying to minimize human sounds, chick, and create visual barriers with the baby fox to ensure it does not become 
um, habituated to humans. They can, they can they can't speak around them except if they say you big dummy. <laughs> That's all they're allowed to say. They're taking these precautions so they can introduce her back into the. I'm wild. sure Tom has not seen this online, but they for some reason foxes, baby foxes giggling have really oh, you know, that taken is off. A, yeah, it's crazy. It sounds it's, it's everywhere. It I like sounds it. Human. It sounds like actual little kids. Laugh. I look. I'm I love animals. Yeah. What, why? Are they going to this trouble for one baby fox? What's going on here? It's about. It, I, I, I think Josh, it's about. Um, sometimes small things lead to bigger things. It sounds like a total hassle. It, but are you saying these people are devoted a, to? They're trying to help this little critter. There this, must this be a beautiful easier, creature. Easier way to do this? the fact that it's so temperamental that they have to wear masks. Of the animal that it is is, but Josh. First of all, uh, what, nature... what's not stated in the story is it just happens that this uh, one fellow there had one of those masks. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> along with a uh, with a tail with a built-in butt plug at home. Oh, and, uh, furry. Uh, I mean, this just does. This seems com com completely unnatural. Well, nature didn't want this fox to thrive, right? Um, all right. So you just how much in the way? Let, let it die much, in front of the kids. I think so. Is your question is how much in the way are we supposed to get? Exactly. Come on. Hmm. We have to dress up as the mother of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Josh, I think you, it, it, it's illustrating a, a larger point. So I'm guessing you're not going to wear the prosthetic fox teat. Is that right? <laughs> I'll put you down as a no. <laughs> What's the larger point? Well, that uh, we can we can help um, Mother Nature but along. Should we? Is what I'm saying. To go to, to I mean, I think it's Mother to... Nature doesn't need our help. That's for sure. That's well, for sure. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't. <laughs> yes, it does. We, we may have. How does it need our help? We are. Have, we have animals that are going extinct. We have p places in the world that are being ruined by because of us. Oh, yes. So therefore. Uh, our our help would be our non-existence. So it doesn't need our help. It needs us to go the hell away. Well, we could do that. <laughs> I got an idea. But let's not forget the let's get you. Why don't we get you a gorilla suit? A really good gorilla suit. Like a $50,000 sure, sure. gorilla yeah, suit. Yeah, yeah. So help and me. If the, you get one of these before I do, I'm really going to be And, and then, then we'll, we'll put you in the uh, gorilla cage with a horny gorilla. I mean, look, comedically, you sure. Can, this you is can. all well and good. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He'll change your tune. I know I won't, because <laughs> I'm I'm anti wearing an animal mask to get something done, and therefore. <laughs> but I'm okay. pro having you mounted against your will by a big angry male gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the planet here for us? Let's be <laughs> honest. <laughs> yes. Okay. It wouldn't have us if we really? were here for a reason. Okay. We were here before the animals. And by and we're doing a pretty good job. We're getting better. I don't. I. I, at, I, I don't, what? We pick we up our garbage. You're we right. care about things. You're right. I do. I we don't pick up that. our garbage. You, I can drive you. We do now. I do. Uh, I can't help whatever Slobby McDouchebag <laughs> does. <laughs> so stop Slobby McDouchebag. <laughs> sure. you know, the McDouchebag family. Yeah. Got Al, Al on the phone. Okay. Let the fox know. Oh, we're, jo we're, oh. we're joined by Al Jackson on the phone, I believe. Hey, Al, can you hear me? I I can. I like that somebody said Al's on the phone. Like I called the hotel, <laughs> and uh, my wife is there. <laughs> it's your husband. Uh, uh, hey Al, how are you? I am good. I'm just like uh, just surrounded by hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of uh, audio equipment, and yet I'm still on the phone. Uh, like it's 1994, but that was a good year, so I'm here for it. Okay, good, 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 good. What's going on? Not too much. We just had a crazy, or currently having a crazy middle of March snowstorm uh, to the point where we even taped a few things on, well, we put a few things on tape in case people can't make it to the studio today. So oh, my. It's the, yeah, it's the last, I, I mean, it's really, I guess I'm hoping the last snowstorm yeah. of uh, 2024. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, right? I know you're in Colorado. I heard this morning that... Uh, couple spots in Interstate 70 are closed, so I just hope that all my friends have got to, gotten to Vail, Beaver Creek, Steamboat, and Aspen. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. my, all my oh, friends yes. are going skiing. 
Our, I believe Tupac said that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, our computer engineer is actually in Beaver Creek. As More on this pretentious update in just a moment. But See, first, this is what I have, oh. to, I have to live with, Al. The yes. chick uh, watches TV all day, and he, he won't forgive me for going outside and enjoying <laughs> the beautiful <laughs> snow and skiing. You could be a little less pretentious. <laughs> okay. Well, well, maybe you couldn't. I don't know. <laughs> He's pouring out a little white wine for the homies, Chick. Let him do it. Okay. Uh, yeah, a little white wine. Yeah. Now, uh, Al is uh, one of the featured uh, uh, hosts of the Daily Blast Live. Uh, Al is also a former school teacher, a, st a stand-up comedian, a DJ, and more. And uh, Al also is helping me with... All uh, the things you wanted to be when you were 19, Tom. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, Al's helping me with my hipster vocabulary. Let's get right to it, Al. Do you have, do you have a good word for me today? I have a great word, and I really like this, Tom. You might have heard this. Tom, what is a girl dinner? A girl dinner? dinner? Oh, boy. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Um, it's not, not the obvious, like a uh, hen party or... Um, and, <laughs> no. A girl dinner. Christy, you're, you're, none of your daughters have ever used this term? I've heard like people use this in the wild. I have not heard this from my girls. Girl dinner. Having a girl dinner. Yeah, yeah. So when you go to a restaurant and you barely eat what you ordered, but then when you get home, you just pig out? <laughs> well, that's a great guess. Well, yeah, that is that's a, a good idea. That is a really guess, good Josh. guess. That's a really good guess. It's actually kind of the opposite. A, a girl dinner, and my girl will do this. She'll just, uh, for dinner, she'll just have like some carrot sticks and a pretzel or something, like a small, like almost like small little uh, hors d'oeuvres that you would get on like a dinner tray from the grocery store oh. but she kind of it, it's it's like these little like little like women i feel like i don't know if it's a uh, like a smaller stomach issue but like she she was like i just had four strawberries and a half a twix and i'm good like i need a steak and then i'm like should i eat more i'm always scared i'm gonna die <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how women just like I'm good. I've never said that. I'm like I'm. This is it. I need to eat all I can. I, this, this, that's uh, I, if you want to talk about somebody coming in from the wild. Obviously, I was on the road for I don't know 16, 17 years, probably in a row, and it took me a long time to first of all stop eating fast food, not really for a health thing. But more just because I was so trained to stop and get fast food. I was like, oh, Al, you have a stove. Now you're safe. You have a bed. <laughs> and I had to, like, train myself to kind of eat like a person that has a schedule because I was so used to just like, okay, I'm in, uh, I'm in Fort Wayne this weekend. Let me, uh, let, let me just stop by Wendy's real quick. And I'm like, no, you can just go four more. I would literally stop by Wendy's that was less than 90 seconds from my house. Mm. So it, it took me a while to, like, learn how to just, eat and be a, a regular person. Well, now you should uh, point, or we should point out that uh, Christy Lee is famous for uh, buying a Kit Kat bar and... Yeah, I do girl dinner a lot. I didn't do know... Do girl dinner by eating half of, half of one stick and then yeah. saving the rest for the next day. I, I like to eat earlier Are in the day. Are you serious? Yeah, I do that. And I like to eat a big lunch and then light dinner, just just the way it is, because we go to bed so early and, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'll eat popcorn for dinner one night. I mean... <laughs> The, you are the embodiment of a girl dinner. Yeah, That's I had, what it is. I did not know that was a term, but yeah, I'm guilty yeah. of this. Yeah, wow. You could just have popcorn and just like lay it on down. I'd be like, well, that's it. Oh, Al, yeah. You're going to die in your sleep. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, I, Absolutely. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, could, I, 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 I can't imagine. First of all, the idea of not eating a whole Kit Kat. That would only be okay if you're like on an abandoned island and like rationing your food. <laughs> right, no. right. I would. I've never put half the Kit Kat away. Yeah. Like, okay, this yeah, is that's, for later. Al, that's one yeah. of those stories where you read about someone. That, well, they were they went off the freeway. They were buried for seven days, <laughs> and all he had to eat was a Kit Kat bar, which he. <laughs> Parceled out. And, the first bite of Kit Kat tastes the same. I would still same. eat it all, Tom. No. They'd be you, like, really? you could have lived if he hadn't eaten it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you a good cook? I can cook. I can throw down a little bit. I love, I love, I love to, wait, look, your, Tom, your boy owns a wok, okay? Uh, a wok is a must-have. Uh, okay. Yeah, it, 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 like, if you like things kind of flash-fried, 
I'll tell you, and let me blow everybody's mind right now. I have my, I'm going to give my Al world famous uh, Frank's Red Hot uh, Chicken Wings. Uh, I know this is walking myself into a lot of jokes, but here's how I do it. I bake my wings uh, for 40 minutes. Then I put hot sauce on them, flash fry them in the wok, put lemon juice on them, and then put them in the air fryer for 10 minutes. Fellas, any woman will be yours after you make that <laughs> Life changing. That does sound like nice. a man, too. Those sound delicious. Yes. That's... I mean, it is I, like I love to play with food. It's so good. Now, are, are you a sushi eater? I am. But you know, Tom, you made me just think about this because I. You know, obviously, I'm up early in the morning, even uh, on days I don't have the call. And I thought about this woman I dated, right? Well, dated. We went on one date. I met this. Uh, she's one of those, like, uh, I was in L.A. She worked in the department store with the perfume. She's, like, a real super attractive, uh, uh, probably, like, Persian woman. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, big fake boobs, all that kind of stuff. And so we went to sushi, and I guess maybe, Christy, she didn't have her girl dinner because she had two martinis while we're just kind of talking and get, and with, you know, like when you're sitting with somebody and you go, oh, they're wasted now. <laughs> like, she got so drunk <laughs> so quickly. She was like this well put together woman. And so she ordered sea urchin. Oh, oh man. From Yes, and sea urchin, for anybody that doesn't know, because I didn't know, Ugh. it's such a uh, uh, a unique and um, weird kind of dish that there's usually a note on the menu that says you cannot return it because it's, it's got the consistency of, uh, so, like, baby diarrhea. Yeah. I, I hate it. It's called uni, right? It's dis yes, yes, it's called uni. It's disgusting. And so she ordered it, and it came... And Christy Lee, <laughs> this, this woman took her two fingers and, like, <laughs> dipped them in the sea urchin oh. and then tried to put it in my mouth. Oh, oh no. Oh. We're done. And it is, like, 740 on a Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> Get ripped up party time, yeah. old school. And so, like, we were, she got so drunk. <laughs> she had taken an Uber to my house. We, uh, it was a sushi place right around the corner from my place in L.A. So I walked back to uh, my house and just put her on the couch. She is head back snoring like oh. a, a Peter from Family Guy. <laughs> and I went in my bedroom and went to sleep and I woke up and she was gone. But that was, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I blame it on the martinis because martinis are considered elegant. But it's really a glass of vodka. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It is. Wow. And on an empty stomach. Oh, yeah. Yikes. Yes, and uh, Christy Lee, those martinis jumped on that woman's back, and I'm sure she had no memory of like yeah. anything. She's probably she, it so was, Oh God, I forgot about that. You know, we, we have a we have a list of uh, dating turnoffs we got the other day from a. Uh, a, a huge survey commissioned by Domino's of all people, but it's really kind of interesting. The biggest turnoff is being rude to a waiter or waitress. But um, some of them, yeah. um, I, I wouldn't have been all that offended. Licking a knife? That's disgusting. Do you lick a knife? Why would you ever do that? Are you Hannibal Lecter? Yeah. Wait, you're going to waste the butter that's left there on the knife? There you go, Josh. <laughs> hey, now. Yeah, uh, guess what, Josh? I'm doing okay in life. Yeah. I'll get more butter. No, I guess, but, uh, but this what, what I'm saying, more what, butter. What this leads me to, Al, would be on a, uh, on a first date, would you order something that's kind of um, a little bit messy to eat? Would you order, like, ribs or something where you got to pick them up or... Or do you order something that's clean and, you know, you don't have to... Clean! <laughs> Tom, I, 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 I spent a summer in Louisville, and I would not disrespect ribs by getting them in a restaurant. I'm sorry. I need ribs in somebody's backyard. I need ribs in somebody's kitchen where the whole house smells like ribs. Because I feel like there's certain foods that need to be prepared by somebody that loves to make it. And I know there are places that make good ribs, but I just I only have ribs made by people mm. whose <laughs> aunt made ribs, his uncle, uh, the, and his uncle and his brother, they all make ribs. That's who I have ribs from. So I only have ribs uh, wearing jeans standing up next to the grill. Okay. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if I get anything messy. 
I, on a date? See, I don't know. Back when I used to drink, I used to, I was just like food was just like the opening act for the headliner, which is, do you want to go to a bar now? <laughs> I never cared about the dinner. The bar is where I shined. I got a couple of drinks in them. I'm funny. I'm charismatic. I got the bartender laughing, and now it's like, yeah, it's getting late. Let's head on back. <laughs> Al, we got to run. Al Jackson, watch him on the oh, Daily Blast. I love y'all. See ya, Al. Love you, Al. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay. Now, Let's, uh, Mr. McGee? Yes, sir. Simply Safe. It's the do-it-yourself, design-it-yourself home security system, FBI property. Property crime data is out. And uh, you won't find this surprising, I don't think. Most home break-ins happen in broad daylight. And now we know the days are getting longer. Maybe next week I'll get used to it. But you can get used to Simply Safe right now. Protect your home with Simply Safe, a best home security system of 2024, named that by U.S. News and World Report and best customer service in home security by Newsweek. Advanced technology protects every room at Simply Safe, window and door of your home, cameras inside and out, high def cameras. Keep track of activity 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's easy to install the system yourself. But Simply Safe, they do have professional that will do it for you. And Simply Safe has the 60-day risk-free trial. Protect your home today. Bob and Tom Show listeners get a special 20% off any new Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. Just visit simplysafetom.com. That's simplysafetom.com. Remember, there's no safe like Simply Safe. Read the reviews. Everybody loves Simply Safe. And as a chick said, chick did it. You can do it. Yep. Uh, have some fun and uh, while you're at it, and then keep yourself safe and secure. Coming up, uh, this is a cucumber. This is a zucchini. Can you tell the difference? Apparently, a lot of folks can't. Uh, we'll find out about that. Also, we have uh, some really interesting stuff in the world of outer space. Kind of a big mystery. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Just got to get a. The steroid era is about to start entering the Hall of Fame. I think so. It might happen. Let me grab that. Grab okay. Hello, Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> hey, guys, it's Babe Ruth. Speaking hey, of the Bambino, Bambino. Hey, the Bambino, the awesome. Sultan of SWAT here in the Hall of Fame, right? Sure is. Yeah, sure, Dad. You know, we don't get the best reception up here in heaven, so let me get this right, Dad. I heard we got a pudgy old bag named Rains headed to Cooperstown. <laughs> yeah. Three, three uh, well, never mind. Why bother? <laughs> yes, hey, you're Hey, they've lowered their standards. I knew it was bad when Cobb didn't go to bed for the last two days and still wash his sheets. <laughs> <laughs> hi -oh. okay, Dad, Back in my day, if you didn't hit at least 600 home runs and bang twice as many dames, you didn't stand a chance. And how? <laughs> now they got these steroids we hear about. <laughs> Hell, all we had was yellow fever, polio, and warts. And that's just what they put in the hot dogs, Dad. <laughs> 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 hey, right, listen, the train's leaving. We got giga water and a box of stogies. I'll see you in Cooperstown. <laughs> Woo! Uh, Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. Hey, hi, I'm Tom, this is Chick, that's Josh, and this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guest. Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass Mouth Horns Plus. Do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right, it all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston or Deacon, Come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th. That's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold. All hosted by Tom and Christy. Aww. Tickets on sale now and they're going fast. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See you there! <laughs> Your, your pro uh, oh, you don't bottom like tan line. Well, if I'm sunless tanning, if I'm doing this airbrushing, yeah. I just don't wear a top, no. Gotcha. Do you, uh, I'm not trying to be crude here, but do you have uh, some kind of um, nipple blocker? No. Uh -huh. 
So then it just becomes kind of one shade. Yep. Do you lift the boobs halfway through to get the underbelly? I don't really have a lot of underbelly. Oh, okay. Do they have like a clothesline yeah. where you can pin them up? Wow. <laughs> you know, I'm quite no. proud of my boobs. They look you should be. Nice. They do look good. Yeah. I think but every, should. even the nicest boobs have the underbelly. Chick's getting a car. <laughs> you lead left. I don't have leave. much of one. No. I'm very Or UCF. I'm Chick McGee, and that's your Bob and Tom Sports Update. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. My girlfriend had a girl's night out the other night, and her friends were posting a bunch of clips in their stories. In every story, she was in the background talking and dancing with the same guy. She won't even tell me who the guy is. I think you are being a little insecure. She's, no, oh, she's, he has a reason yeah. to be insecure. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, she I got know. caught. Yeah. Especially if she won't even say yeah, the guy's name. She, she might not even know it. Well, then oh, you say that. Oh, that makes it even worse. <laughs> if you talk to a guy all night and don't know his name, yeah, that's... So Honey, I didn't. I don't even know his name. It made the sex very impersonal. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at six a.m. Eastern. All all night, night, Bob and Tom, all Bob and Tom. This is Bob and Tom, twenty four seven. The next time you're traveling, don't forget about the historical and beautiful state of Illinois. Catch a Cubs game at Wrigley Field in Chicago. Hit a riverboat casino in Peoria. And make sure you visit the charming community of Effingham, Illinois, where Interstate 70 meets the little Wabash River. And whenever you're in Effingham, visit the Effing House Family Restaurant. Founded in 1854 by the corpulent railroad magnate, Colonel Harry S. Effing, the Effing House Family Restaurant is one of America's oldest and finest dining establishments. Start your day with the delicious effing country breakfast featuring an effing omelet with toast, grits, and a big effing beverage of your choice. Or try our BED, the big effing deal. Once again this week, it's effing ham and eggs. For lunch, try the huge effing burger. And fried in a rich butter sauce mixed with big effing egg yolks, we call it the effing heart attack. <laughs> it's an effing experience you'll never forget. And what about dinner? Juicy effing steaks with fresh effing veggies and a creme brulee that's effing out of this effing world. Or go effing nuts with a hot fudge sundae. How would you rate the effing house family restaurant? It was the best effing experience of my life. Rate this place? Well, I wouldn't give it a B. I wouldn't even give it a C because it's effing A. <laughs> In Effingham, Illinois, it's the Effing House Family Restaurant. You'll have an effing good time. <laughs> Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. No matter how hard I try, can't keep my hands off my face. <laughs> Bob and Tom Radio. I actually uh, I have a, a sexual fantasy associated with the earthquake. Go. All right. Woke well, chick up. Uh -huh. mm. uh, in my fantasy, I am making love to this woman. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she feels the earth move beneath her. Mm. Ah, yes. And then she rolls over on top of me and shields me from debris. <laughs> 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 Safety first, everybody. Safety first. Hey, this is Henry Phillips, and you're listening to Bob and Tom. Cross tickets. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We're all here. Hello, Tom. Well, hello, Chick McGee. How are you? It's good sir. to see you. Uh, I know you're very excited about uh, a lot of action in the world of football, your oh, favorite sure. sport. There is no offseason. And you know. uh, the, my favorite NFL player, the very uh, colorful uh, uh, Gardner Minshew, will be leaving the Colts and heading to Ace's favorite team, the Las Vegas Raiders. Now I'm going to have to. He wants to be a winner. Uh, Everyone's okay. a winner, baby. Hot chocolate. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 
God, I hated that bit. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I don't know why. Because um, and that crap you listen to in the morning. If I told you, you'd be you'd be angered with me. Oh no, okay. yeah, don't tell us then. Uh, okay. not somebody's hairstyle in the band. No, no, no. Uh, when I was in uh, in right. living in London, that uh, song care, I believe in miracles played about every two minutes on the radio. The BBC had a very limited uh, playlist, and I just despise that song. Don't we all have songs we hate? Yeah, sometimes uh, illogically. Yeah. yeah. You just go, you know what? I don't know why. I just can't stand it. Yeah. Rubs you wrong. Yeah. yeah. I've, yeah I've, I've, I've now realized in my advanced age that uh, it's completely unreasonable that I hate so many things, but <laughs> but I do. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you just go, I don't know why. Yeah. And then it's it's unreasonable why I like so many things. For example, this. Bruise that yeah. sex down <laughs> the deep woods. <laughs> it's Cosby. Here he is with his joke of the day. Now, if you're out and about today... And you happen to see sheep standing in a circle. You know what that's called? What? What? Shepherd's pie. That was Ace Cosby's joke of the day. I suppose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's pie day, you see, Josh. Yeah, I, uh, three, yeah, no, one, four. Today. No, no, it's not yeah. that I didn't get it. I think what we've just uh, didn't want witnessed it. is that he, uh, I'll do something for pie day. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Well, well, you got to appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, like Josh knows the official uh, yeah. uh, reptile of, of the day. What? Of Pi Day? Yeah, you know, the Python. Well, naturally. Oh. You should have oh. saved that one. Maybe Leah, I would have led with that. <laughs> <laughs> that was your headliner joke. Speaking hey, speak, of speak, sheep. Well, oh. speaking of animals, if yes. I may, I'm uh, once again proven right. Oh, God. My gosh. Uh, we what? should stay out of nature's <laughs> business, right? Well, and this comes from somebody who knows. Okay. Uh, Jake says, we often would acquire young kits and raise them in our house and yard. These are fox kits, of course. Um, so they're, they're little tiny folks. They were very uh, hunting, fishing, and trapping uh, type of family. Mm -hmm. And they uh, here's what would happen. They normally would be a part of the family like any dog or cat. They were very entertaining to mom, dad, and the siblings. However, at about four to six months old, they would just take off, and they would go to the wilds. And he said one that they named Reddy would uh, come back every now and again, like once to, one to two times a year for mm -hmm. several, several years, and just say hi and kind of hang out with them for an hour and then go back to being Aww. a fox. So what these people are doing by dressing up as foxes to try not to mess with this whatever, completely unnecessary, Jake said. I see what you're saying. Hmm. The okay. animals will be fine. If they see humans. Yes. Gotcha. You're not going, yeah. I, I don't know. I, well, we do know. I have a fox <laughs> and I have a fox that lives in my neighborhood. I see him all the time. Yeah, there, yeah. You know, yeah I weren't there him. animals that if, if uh, for whatever reason, humans had touched the babies, <laughs> yep. that they would be shunned by But them. that has been debunked, from what right. I understand, with many animals. Like birds. Like if you pick yeah. up a baby bird and put it back in the tree... The mama bird will come back yeah. around. Oh, no, it'll that. peck its eyes out. Oh. out the <laughs> they That's what I heard. Yeah. I can freak they out here. It. <laughs> so I'm talking to one of my friends. I won't say the context because it'll make Chick angry. All right. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, it's uh, it's making America angry, okay? It's not <laughs> right, just right. me. So my friend uh, <laughs> grew up in Italy. <laughs> and uh, well, of course he did. Yeah, making America and, angry. And, and I uh, bet you you'd have to... Show this guy a picture of Tom. Go over <laughs> the specific event when they were friends and no, quotes. No, we were actually... Um, His mom probably worked for them oh, in the kitchen. Oh, that a-hole, the guy yeah. might say? We yeah. Were, uh, <laughs> you actually know that. We oh, His mom hired my mom. Uh, That's right. <laughs> Go on, Tom. I'm listening. <clears throat> yes. We were sitting at the Two Elms Lodge on Vale, and I, uh, I'm sorry, oh, no. whatever it's called. We, uh, but he grew up in Italy, and um, and it's Italy, by the way. Yeah, and uh, on the Italian Alps, of course. Mm, yeah, hence of the course. incredible skiing ability. But we were talking about exotic and weird stuff we'd eaten. <laughs> Have you heard of this thing where you eat, you eat, and they. Was his answer an Italian woman? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they eat the whole bird. Oh, yeah, Ortolan? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I've yeah always, was, you know what this is, I've then? I've always wanted to do this. Yes. Really? Yes. It's... No. Uh, explain it what it is, then, Josh. Uh, it's a type of French uh, cuisine that's now illegal. You, you cannot do this anymore in yeah. France yeah, or you, anywhere, I guess. Don't you cover your head when you eat it? Is yes, for two reasons. One is... Uh, so, you, it's, a, it's a whole bird, and they... Uh, they blind them because they eat more at night, and so they blind them, and uh, then they get plumper when they as they eat more, and then you drown them in a certain uh, alcohol Jesus. and <laughs> concoction, and then you cook them up and uh, you eat the whole thing, bones and all. Yeah, you just put you the whole thing in your, in your mouth. mouth, and you have a napkin over your head 
for two reasons. One is to uh, savor the so the aromas and the flavors oh. don't escape. And also to uh, hide your shame in eating it from God. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's true. It, it, I'm, I'm sorry, what's it called again? Ortolan. Ortolan. Yeah, he, we, we, he was talking about that. If you Is have an underground that? supper club and you're serving it, please invite me. I'll pay top dollar. Uh, and by top dollar, I mean like 50 bucks. And what kind of critters are they? Are they Birds. Birds. I mean, I'm, are they a specific... I, I They're a uh, Mediterranean uh, chicken, is what they are. <laughs> so when when he, he was telling me, I for, and I, I forget what kind of bird it was. Did but he it, say it was exquisite? Supposed yeah, and he, he kind of said the same thing you did, which was he was sort of ashamed of it, but it right. was fantastic. Yeah. I, uh, it must be tried. I could I, not do that. I was at a charity event a couple of weeks ago, and they, one of the courses was quail. Mm. And the little bones, I did not eat any because it kind of freaked me out, but my... Friends at the table said, yeah, are we supposed to eat these little bones? Because, I mean, they're hard to pull out, but it, it was like, I don't know. I I don't know with quail if you eat the bones or not. It was weird. I'm, I'm not a quail eater. Have I you think you were, you're asking mm -hmm. for an intense an intestine puncture. If you it eat seems like it. Chicken yeah. bones. Yeah. yeah. Which guy in the NBA wrote the uh, his autobiography is called Hard to Pull Out? Uh, <laughs> Sean Kemp? Yeah, that's, that's a whole, uh, Okay. I'll thank you very much. More coming. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Reach us toll free at 1 888 Bob Tom 1 or at bobandtom.com. This is. Okay. Hey, Peter. Hey, Bob. <laughs> what are you doing out here? <laughs> Same thing you're doing. Got a light? from another office <laughs> she's a smoker just like me <laughs> now we're dating and we're smoking <laughs> we're smoking in front of the building we are smoking <laughs> in front of the building and we smell like we've been camping it could be raining <laughs> it could be snowing but we're smoking in front of the building was a smoker <laughs> until I looked outside. They were smoking while I was working. <laughs> so now I'm smoking in front of the building. We are smoking in front of the building. And the ashtrays are overflowing. We are smoking instead of working. We are smoking in front of the building. We are smoking in front of the building. We are standing, we are talking, but mostly we are smoking. We are smoking in front of the building. Smoking in front of the building.
and let's get back to the chinchilla. We we uh, sent uh, members of our staff yeah. plus Donnie Baker to your uh, garage. Well, she is my mistake. So traumatized right now. She's not come out of her little house in it. No doubt the, whole the chinchilla. Day. Oh well, yeah. that's because she met Donnie Baker. Mm -hmm. Yes, true. her um, ears are as big as yeah. frisbees. They are yeah. very big. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I can't get over how they're native of South America, and mm -hmm. they use those to you know, and they're and they're nocturnal, so they must be a lot of listening they, going they on. They do a lot of listening at night because you can't they do. see very well. Yeah. And they respond, of course, with their brain by going, duh. <laughs> <laughs> duh, I'm a chinchilla. Oh, uh, wow, well, it's that great wow. big thing right there. That looks like a really nice fur coat that lady's got on. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what, what the what that's made of. <laughs> duh. Well, I'm going to rest so I, I'm gonna rest for a while so I can poop again. Duh. I can tell you. <laughs> I'm, I'm not wow. like a dog. I can't play frisbee or catch. I just sit here going, duh. <laughs> I'm kind of like something in a frame, like a picture, except I just go, duh, and then I poop. Except you have to feed me, and I poop. I'm like a picture you have to feed. Duh. I can tell you what, they don't come when you call them. That's for damn sure. I will. What? I'll come I'm if you call me. Again. And Sam Samurai, no neither, her legs. <laughs> 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 Hello, you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. This has been Chick McGee speaking. Uh, now, we have uh, Lord Corrette with us in the studio. How are you, sir? I'm good. Oh, good. You're, uh, let's see, last time we checked, you were a single man. Yeah. Still single, I gather? Did you, Still did, single. Are you officially divorced? Did that go? I'm annulled, which is like it never happened. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. Really? The judge said in 30 years he'd never done an annulment. He said, but if you kids want one, I'll give you one. So, How about that? No, yeah, we went for it. Because as you, you know, my... Did, did you go there So together? an annulment means you get to keep your stuff. Kind of, yeah. Oh. Yeah, but uh, as you know, my, my most recent marriage was a disaster. It made the wreck of the Edmunds Fitzgerald look like a fender bender. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sorry to hear that. Uh, hello. And you remember Lord's famous line about uh, gun control. Ah, uh, yes. yes. It, it, the relationship taught me a lot. It mm -hmm. taught me they won't sell you a handgun if you're crying. <laughs> 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 really? Uh, <And> it's, <laughs> they won't. They just won't they do, do it. it. And it's only a rule of thumb. Uh, they don't have it written no, down I anywhere. See. They spring it at the last minute. And you're Ooh. like, well, if I'd have known that, I'd have pulled myself together uh, out front. Kostaki uh, <laughs> Kanemopoulos uh, is our guest. A Maryland burglar broke into a house, robbed a couple at gunpoint, and then forced them to play their piano so he could sing along. He was arrested for <laughs> armed robbery, wanton endangerment, and aggravated karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Love Hewitt says she actually enjoys looking at her breasts on the Internet. Huh. Well, then I should call her. Apparently, we have a lot in common. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Apparently. The National Museum of the Native American Indian is open in Washington, D.C. Unfortunately, they now have to move it to Oklahoma to make room for the Christopher Columbus Museum. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Frank... Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Yo. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Yellow. There's Josh Arnold. Hi. He's here. There's Ace Cosby. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Uh, we were talking of all things about um, eating whole birds. Yeah. No. It's, it's illegal, I, right? So I had to look this up. Uh, it's Ortolan. Josh, O R T O L A N. You're the, <laughs> you're the one. <laughs> what I've been saying. That's what he's been saying. Ordolan. No, I, I didn't understand. I thought at least like Ortolan, which sounds like some kind of fabric in a in a rug. Well, uh, Ortolan seen... sounds like an alien trying to speak English. Yes. Ortolan. <laughs> um, Barada Nick to Ortolan. But uh, once again, uh, you're right, Josh. That you you people cover their heads when eating these things. Mm -hmm. It's cooked and eaten whole. And it's illegal in some places now. And they, <laughs> and, but you, you're anxious to try it out? Oh, I'd love to try it, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I know it's a little cruel, but uh, I don't care if it tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Our, our family.
feathers still on? No, okay. they are plucked. Okay. How do they cook them? Do they fry them? Do I'm they... not exactly sure how they're prepared, but they oh. look very crispy. When okay, it's... so that would make it better. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Described as, in big... some cases, a beautiful songbird. Not anymore. How big are they? Real tiny. Yeah, not, not like little. parakeet. Oh, they're real tiny. Or at least like, like the, the finished ones I've seen, are, they look like parakeets. <laughs> yeah, oh I saw gosh. that Andrew Zimmern eat one. Oh, he ate man. a bunch one time. Mm. He ate a bunch at once? Yeah. You eat more than one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my friend who was talking about it, he, yeah, you eat a handful of them. Was he saying that they, it was just... Uh, he, he he said they were amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I used to love that Bizarre Foods yeah. with Andrew Zimmern. I like he eat tarantula oh. and... And, yeah. some, and all the testicles that anybody, any, anything yeah. that had testicles, he'd eat them. Yeah. Now, I just, so I Googled this, and here's what I, I landed on this story. Eyeballs. The oh. Museum of Disgusting Food. Yeah. In Malmo, Sweden. Um, uh, Japan, uh, a, a popular dish, cod sperm. Whoa. Mm. Man, that better. How do you get that? Well, yeah, Christy, pretend you, gotta, pretend you have a broom in your hand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and up and Maybe a toothpick. Yeah. Uh, wow. Um, uh, you ever milk a cod? <laughs> uh, the male member of the bowl. Yeah. Um, durian. This is the one that... The, oh, I've had that. Um, it's that fruit that just smells like absolute garbage. But it, it tastes okay? No, no, I didn't care for it at all. But people love it. Okay, and th this is another one of the most disgusting. That's Singapore. Uh, yeah, very traveled. Duck yes. fetus. What? Oh, wow. Yeesh. Really? Well, we Gosh. eat chicken. We eat chicken fetuses all the time, don't we? Oh, that's I true. I have them scrambled. I have them in omelets. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, uh, this this now those are more embryos. Yeah, 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 now we get now we get into a, an yeah. argument that involves the Supreme Court <laughs> not, and, and Alabama. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if, if eating They're eggs embryos, is I eating think. eggs still legal in Alabama. I don't know. Uh, wow. Okay. Well, uh, there we go. Uh, and I, uh, uh, I've never eaten that stuff, Josh. But uh, now, would you eat the thing where they they bring the live monkey to the table and? Then they, sec they, they secure its head and crack it open. I would not do that. No. no. Now, if somebody ca said, hey, here's a bowl of uh, monkey brains, would I try? I don't even think I'd try it. Yeah. Isn't that how the zombie apocalypse starts? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Eat infected brains. Yeah, or, you know. I don't yeah, think okay, so. Okay. Uh, very good. Now, um, we were talking about birds. We have more bird news with Christy Lee. Yes, we do. U.S. Customs officers in California prevented a woman from smuggling wild birds into the country. A canine team at the Tecate Port of Entry encountered a 35-year-old woman applying for admission to the United States from Mexico. During an inspection of the woman's vehicle, officers found and removed a total of 21 parrots and one keel-billed toucan, uh, toucan that had been concealed in the car. <laughs> I wonder how you hide birds. Yeah. The driver was detained for attempted smuggling <laughs> while the birds have been placed under quarantine by USDA veterinary science or services. Rather. Hmm. I guess the parrots, I mean, literally squawked. Yeah. Mm. Rot, rot. She smuggled me in. Rot, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but that actually is leading to something. Um, we were trying to figure out what this uh, sound was in the Sanford and Son theme. <laughs> This uh, great, great theme song from Days Gone By. A little bit of organ, and then... Uh, and you think that's a, like a bass, a bass harmonica? I thought it sounded like a bass harmonica. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, uh, but cool. uh, And then Chick mentioned a, a funny situation in which this guy plays a baritone sax through a... Uh, uh, a traffic cone. Traffic cone. A big orange traffic cone. I like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a wild sound. Oh, love it. I mean, that, it, to me, this sounds like there's a guy in a car behind you and you smell pot and you just... Bum, I know, bum, I know bum, to bum, you bum, that's bum. what it is. That's exactly <laughs> what it sounds like. Uh, we, 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 what we am I talking about? Come on. We know. <laughs> this is you real, know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's a real thing in contemporary culture. I'm not saying I approve or disapprove. <sighs> Uh, but uh, this uh, kind of relates and kind of doesn't, but I just think it's so funny. It comes to us from Frank. I Frank, from Frank. Uh, uh, Frank uh, sounds like a great human being. Frank, by the way, lives in Florida. Um, oh, in Florida, Frank. Frank. Yeah. Okay. He says he lives uh, not too far from DeLand. Oh, God. 
That's a weird name for a town. Yeah, I wonder why they call it Deland. It's near the sea. <laughs> well, hey, thank you, Frank. If you didn't call it Deland, there'd be no telling uh, where you were. No. Yeah, first time email. Because <laughs> you were talking about that eagle that got caught on the grill of a car. I was working with a guy um, who told me about the time he zip-tied a harmonica to the inside of his brother's car by the radiator. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so when he drove the car, oh. it would oh blow through God. the harmonica and make this weird whistling sound. That is hysterical. His brother could not figure out what it was. <laughs> <laughs> he kept checking under the hood, finally took it to a garage to have it looked at. The mechanic took one look, called all of his buddies over, <laughs> and they all had a big, big laugh. That's funny. Pretty good prank. Yep. That's really funny. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I don't know what that noise is, sir. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's, it's harmonic. Every time I drive, it sounds like John Popper. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like I'm the beginning of Piano Man. Yeah, what the hell oh. is this? That's great. Okay, I'm sorry, Christy, back to you. Astronomers have found evidence that a vast ocean may be hiding beneath the icy exterior of Saturn's mini-moon, known as, is it Mimas? Nicknamed yep. mm -hmm. Saturn's Death Star Moon. Researchers determined that a hidden ocean 12 to 18 miles wide likely lies beneath the moon's frozen crust. Christy, well, you know what this, where there's water, there's... Aliens. Life. That's right. Mimas, one of Saturn's 140 moons, is barely 250 miles in diameter and is a surprising environment to find liquid water in. Study co-author Valerie Laney said it looks like a potential habitable world. Wow. Yes. Mimas boasts the second largest impact crater of any moon in the solar system, thus the reason it's compared to the Death Star, of course, that's oh, featured in Star like Wars. Oh, it looks like that. Yeah. yeah. That cool? Yeah. Wild. But see, I see, my point would be, if there are aliens there, let's let them uh, keep minding their own business. What do you yeah. think? Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I like that. Let's, yeah. Uh, let them, uh, yeah. Yeah, did, let's, did you? Well, maybe them? they'd be like creatures of the Black Lagoon. They all live underwater. Oh, they're sort of oh, fishy and yeah. weird. Yeah. Now, I sent you an article. Did you have a chance to read that yesterday, Josh? Um, I, you sent, uh, I don't know. Which one was it? About uh, Dan Aykroyd. No, are you being serious? Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't get it. Oh, oh really? Yeah. I wonder who I sent it to. Hmm. Um, uh, but, yeah, Dan Aykroyd's a firm believer that uh, there are visitors from outer space. Oh, 100%, yeah. He, he knows he's an encyclopedia when it comes to that kind of stuff. And he's had experiences uh, where he, he he tells one story about being in his motorcycle, and he looks up, and there's this light hovering over him. Yes. Uh, it, and it, he, I can't tell it as well as he can, obviously, but it's a, it's a, he's a, absolutely convinced that there are People walking among us, or yeah. cre cre creatures of some sort that come and go at will. So, I'm, I'm not, not, be I believe kind I of that like could happen. like a three-hour podcast of him talking about it. Mm -hmm. It was a fantastic. I bet. I loved it. And I, 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 is he, he is in the new Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters, is that right? He is, yeah. Yes. So is Bill. Oh, and Bill, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And Ernie Hudson. Yes, of Hudson's course. Ernie Hudson's back. All right. Well, those have all been pretty good. The one, the lady version... I tried. I think Annie Potts is in it, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, she is. Oh, wow. I don't I know about Annie Moranis. Potts. Wouldn't it be fun if Moranis yeah. showed up? It man, oh, man. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, um, yeah uh, that, that's a cool... Uh, God, I wonder who I sent that to, Josh. It may have... Uh, I'll check. Might be in your I've spam. Had, I, I blocked you, so I'll, I'll, I'll just... Uh, <laughs> Hard to tell. <laughs> I'm blocking and get this. <laughs> no, if you send it to my work email, I check that probably once a week. Okay. Uh. <laughs> So I'll, I'll check that. That, that, that clear is clear. <laughs> uh, and, and this portion of the Bob and Tom Show is uh, brought to you by our friends at Orange Insoles. That's exactly right. Man, if you have back pain, hip pain, or knee pain, you know how much it affects your daily routine. We take Pat and I were talking in the green room about how we take some certain things for granted. Yeah. Uh, well, not granted, more granted, really, but... Uh, our bones feel like granite sometimes, don't they, Pat? They do Stiff, yeah. oh. rock solid, mm. crumbly. <laughs> I'll continue with this. So, it's frustrating, isn't it? Well, when you don't know what's happening, I bet you the culprit is in your shoes. I'm talking about that lame, thin liner in there that's offering you zero support. How about checking out orangeinsoles.com. Orange insoles offer arch support. They have a deep cut to properly support your heel, your feet, and thus your whole body. 
they are going to help you alleviate all that pain. Think of a table. If it's wobbling, it doesn't have proper support. We're talking foundation, my friends. It all starts from the ground up, including your body. If there's something wrong with your feet, you're going to feel it pretty much everywhere. These are great for work boots, sneakers, dress. <laughs> you okay? You okay? They will not help. Uh, uh, yes, they won't help uh, typhoid. Right. But they w- <laughs> just gonna have a sip of uh, Joe. Yeah, okay, here. Uh, uh, a cup of thirty weight. Uh, the point bust. is that orange insoles are all about uh, getting your body stable from the ground up. Your feet have to uh, match the uh, sole of your foot. Yes. The, the average shoe that you buy in the store <laughs> does not do that. It comes with that baloney-like flabby yeah. thing in there that just stinks. Yes. Boy, it would stink too, wouldn't it? Yeah, you need something serious like an orange insole, right, Josh? That's exactly right. And today you can get free shipping at orangeinsoles.com. Plus, orange insoles comes with a 60 day, we want you to be happy guarantee, and no cutting required. You don't have to break out the scissors to get these things to fit into your shoes. The insoles at orange insoles come true to size. That's orangeinsoles.com. Feel better, do more. Thank you very much, Josh. Uh, boy, this is a big ask. Yes. I got a big ask here. What? Mr. McGee, yeah. when we come back, we're going to be talking with T.J. Miller. Uh-huh. After that, Jerry has requested, can we please see Chick McGee do his mesmerizing chair moonwalk to the sound of the saxophone going through the road cone. piece. The road cone. <laughs> the the road cone. cone. Yeah. The traffic cone. Yes. And that, that that would be quite a visual. Yes, I look sure. forward. Thank you, Jerry. Thank road you for piece. applying that. You know, the road thing. <laughs> right, right. Road piece. I got Perfect it. Thanks. Everyone knows what we're talking about. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Essential Morning Radio. All. Hey, did you enjoy those videos played in that break? Check out the Bob and Tom YouTube playlist for more great stuff. Hey, hi, I'm Tom, this is Chick, that's Josh, and this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show is coming. That's right, Rock 105 WKLC bringing us to town with a live broadcast with... Special guest Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth Horns Plus... Don't forget. You see the word "don't forget"? <laughs> no, but it's all. But it's like it's like it half says, a sentence. Don't miss an yeah, amazing it's like comedy don't show. Miss amazing. Start is over. Wrong word. Hey, Charleston. It's the Bob and Tom Show. That's right. And our friends from Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live broadcast. Space. <laughs> Speech. <laughs> Speechery. <laughs> One more time. Here we go. This for sure. Here we go. All right. Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show coming to, yes, your area from Rock 105 WKLC. They're bringing us to town for a live show. Special guest. Duke Tomato. (laughs) You nerds. Start over. Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guest. Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth Horns. Plus, do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right. It all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston, if you come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th. That's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold, and all hosted by yourself. (laughs) yourself. (laughs) (laughs) All hosted by Tom and Christy. Tickets on sale tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Time at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See you there! I mean, okay. do you want to, do you want to no, say where no one knows you want a different mic so you can stand? Yeah, I want to stand because I mean, this is a real, well, you can turn that up into a standing yeah. mic. If you, you can uh, take that so out of the desire. socket there, it'll, oh, if I can hold it. Oh, oh. 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 yeah.
no, wait a minute. No, Just uh, take the whole thing out of the studio. Yeah, you can take it out if you. There we go. Going and, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm feeling good. Hey, Chickster, how's it going now, over there? We have a we have a thirty good. second thirty second snippet of the music. Does this music start? Uh, are you aware of where this starts? Do you have enough intro and this? We're you know me and old Dino practiced it once or twice, so yeah. okay. we might be able to figure. All right, it out. We'll, we'll see. I'll I'm gonna have to ride the volume here. Make sure I get it right. Ready? Yeah, I think so. Here we oh, go, boy. No one can hold you down if you really want it. Just steal your destiny right from the hands of fate. Reach for the cup of life because your name is on it. Do you really want it? Do you really want it? To EO. Vida Loca. Go, go, go. Living La Vida Loca. Idiots. It's a lay, a lay, a lay. Oh, it sounds just oh, like sorry. living La Vida Loca. It sounds just it's like not, living La Vida not, Loca. Uh, Perhaps oh, our oh, arguments oh, with Ricky Martin, not even with you. I think maybe. Okay, I've so. never been more disappointed. So what are we, we're supposed to go ole, ole, ole? Yes, guys. Come on. This is a give and take song. Let's try it again. Just steal your destiny right from the hands of fate. Reach for the cup of life because your name is on it. And Do you really want it? Right. Do you really want it? Yeah. Okay. It, 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 now, the, wait a minute. In our defense, oh, that's, I, it's living La Vida Loca, only yeah, redone. Yeah, much. it is yeah. for the most part. Yeah. Uh, that is very judgmental of you. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Well, it does sound very similar. It sounds very accurate. similar. I do love the song Living, living La Vida Loca. We I will love, say that. Do you I, do that one? I will, it's a great song. I don't do that one because it's not as much fun with the audience. <laughs> we got it. That's a wrap. <laughs> God. When you think about it, that would come in handy. You come home oh, late, God. your wife's yeah. like, where the hell were you? And cut. <laughs> All right, let's try it again. This time you don't care where I was. In fact, you're happy to see me. Let's try a topless. Action. <laughs> it's time once again for people who suck at small talk. <laughs> hey, nice weather we're having today, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, it, it is rather amazing the cyclical manner in, in which meteorological trends manifest themselves. <laughs> Jeez, sorry I f***ing asked. <laughs> Join us again next time for People Who Suck at Small Talk. <laughs> the Essential Morning Radio. All day and all night. Yeah, this is Bob and Tom. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Christy's here, and Josh, and uh, and Pat, Ace Cosby, I'm Chick McGee. Hey. Here's Tom Griswold. Well, Hello. thank you very much. We are um, working on the electronic aspects of a contemporary ah. culture. There we go. I can there see that is. handsome man. Oh, wait a minute. That's Josh. Yes. Oh, that handsome man is T.J. Miller. T.J. Hey, T.J., how are you? Great. Look at this facial hair I, I shaved just to make my wife upset. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What exactly is that? It's, it looks like a dagger extending from your ear into a porn mustache yeah, nice. from the mid-70s. Real nice, yeah. Oh, exactly I think right. My sideburns are slowly dripping into a mustache. Yeah. That's so a good look. it's kind of an 1890s look. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly do you have one, do you have one of those, what are those bicycles called with the big front wheel? and the, A uh, penny farthing. A penny farthing. Yes. <laughs> You look like you could be riding one of those, yes. A penny farthing for the thoughts. Now, are, are, are those... I know who shot Lincoln. <laughs> Stuff like that, yeah. Now, are those... A penny farthing for your thoughts is hilarious. Are, 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 those, are those functional glasses, or are those so-called 60s-era tea shades? They're both. Oh, yeah? <laughs> to be honest with you, yeah. They're sort of... They are functional. My prescription is in there. But I love them because uh, they mute the fluorescent lights. I and see. So we don't really realize how much that affects your sort of mentality. Right. Um, but, yeah, I like them. And they also look like I might know how to play the saxophone yeah. mm. or the trumpet. Okay. Right. Now, uh, T.J. Miller is a distinguished stand-up comedian. The new album is out. It's called Smooth Peanut Butter. And before we get to some of your dates coming up, T.J., it's my understanding that uh, many, many, of course, artists of your caliber have what they call merch, uh, T-shirts, et cetera, et cetera. Am I correct in saying that you are selling peanut butter? You're absolutely correct, Bob. You've got to understand, 
I'm a purveyor of fine foods. I have my own line of hot sauce, which uh, is pretty great. That is uh, Indiana uh, grown. And, uh, and so I was doing that and it was going so well. I thought, well, why don't I do my own line of peanut butter? Cause I love peanut butter. I mean, I love hot sauce, but I'm a huge peanut butter guy. Me too. And I got with another Indiana uh, family and we have this line of peanut butter. It's the best peanut butter you'll ever have. It's almost a dessert peanut butter, but we have dark chocolate coconut. That's for the ladies. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and then we have cherry chocolate with a real dried cherries, milk chocolate, and honey roasted peanuts. And then my favorite is toffee crispy with toffee, milk chocolate, and rice crispy. Oh, wow. wow. Now, is, is it called TJ P and J? Uh, close. It's T P B and J peanut better. Peanut ah, better. Okay, okay. Very good. Uh. Okay, now, uh, the stupid question number two, does one take a Sharpie to sign this at your gigs? Yeah, because I sell it afterwards, that's my merch, because nobody really needs another T-shirt. Right. You know, especially men. I feel like every woman in a man's life wants him to get rid of T-shirts. <laughs> There's too many T-shirts. And none of us will get rid of the T-shirts because that's our sentimental, that's our jewelry. Yep. We don't wear bracelets or earrings. Or so you have watches. And you have, you know, T-shirts. And some some women will go, uh, well, what about this one? You got this for free. Why don't you get rid of that one? I mean, you got it for free. And we'd say, that's exactly why I'm keeping it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, TJ, you have such a great speaking voice. And I know you've done a lot of voice acting. Thank you. I'm going to have to say the same to you, sir. Oh, yeah, but uh, <laughs> yours has character. Mine, mine is just flat Midwestern broadcast standard America. Uh, and uh, no, uh, let me guys. The Bob and Tom show on 314-24. There you go. Traffic <laughs> with go. Christine. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Uh, 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 TJ uh, is on tour, but tell tell us about the new stand up album. I want to say I think I read. Did you, did you record it in Nashville? Am I getting this right? I recorded in Nashville, uh, Tennessee, at uh, Zany's Comedy Club, which is a great comedy club. It, you know, uh, I don't know if you know Nashville. It's a bachelorette party that has a city somewhere in it. <laughs> and, uh, uh, for me, it was there's always great audiences, and I felt like I could really get the live. You know, my favorite comedy albums growing up always had sort of, you could feel the show. It felt live. It really felt like you were in the room. And so I wanted to do that. I felt I would probably be able to do that at Zany's. And it really worked, you know, the first, because I, I improvise a lot in my stand up. Sometimes I'll improvise half the show. Sometimes, depending on what's going on, I'll improvise the entire show. I'll just riff, maybe a little bit of crowd work. Um, and so I wanted some of that in there. And there is the first track. It was a really funny moment before I went on stage. I sort of went, uh, I was getting ready to go up, and this bouncer comes up to me. He goes, I want to tell you there's a, um, a table that is very drunk. I go, okay, which table is it? He said, it's table 64. And I said, I don't know the numbers of the tables. <laughs> and then suddenly they introduced me, ladies and gentlemen, T.J. Miller. And I go, what table is it? He goes, it's the one that's behind the one in front of it. And I said, I don't know what that means. <laughs> So then I go on stage, and probably within 15 seconds, some guy yells the craziest thing at me. You've got to listen to the album. And then I was able to sort, it was a very drunk thing, but it also made sense, but it didn't. So I sort of spun that into sort of a piece of improvisation that's just really fun, and I felt like this needs to be in the album. People oh. need to see that no, no matter what happens in a show, I'll go where the audience takes me. And so that was really good. And then it's some material, some about the pandemic, some just straight, you know, jokes and all of that. And then some stories from my uh, past, some really funny ones that uh, I think. It's, so it's a really good kind of menagerie. I want to say that so people like me less. Wow. It's a really good menagerie of uh, what I do as a stand-up comic and the reason that you should, you know, kind of come and see me live. Wow. Uh, T TJ, I I've asked the same question already twice this week. I think it was Tom Papa. And Paul Reiser, I asked this exact question, which is, growing up, um, I don't know in your day if it would have been a cassette or if it would have been a vinyl album, but one of the classic comedy yeah. albums, in my case, I always say it was uh, it was Robert Klein, Child of the 50s. That's the album I played 10,000 yes. times. Did you have a particular uh, man or woman whose album you listened to over and over again? Well, several. I listened to Pryor, a lot of Carlin, um, some Robert Schimmel, who just I thought was so funny. And then, but of all those people, uh, it was Steve Martin. 
And Steve Martin's special from the Hollywood Bowl was something that my mother would watch with me when she was sort of sad or in a bad place or something, which wasn't often. But we saw, I bet I saw that 50 or 100 times. And so all of his albums I got and uh, Let's Get Small, uh, Comedy's Not Pretty, um, Wild and Crazy Guy. And I think I actually liked Let's Get Small the most of anything. And I've just heard that hundreds of times. And then in preparation for the album, which I did 10 drafts over 10 mixes. Uh, and in preparation for that, um, I was listening to everybody's comedy albums. So I got to a lot of contemporary albums, also Jim Norton and, you know, Norm MacDonald has sketch. Also, Adam Sandler's sketch comedy album, I thought was so important for me because I eventually became a sketch comedy improviser. I did Second City in Chicago. And so that had a lot to do with me becoming a sketch comedy performer and writer. Um, but I think Steve Martin all the way. Were you a fan of those albums? Oh, all? yeah. yeah. And, and it's funny because that was Tom Papa's answer. He went through a bunch. That he said, was it really? Yeah, yeah. So he settled on that one. Uh, and it just kind of depends uh, how old you so are and, and what era it is. But yeah, those Steve Martin albums are, are brilliant. And it is brilliant, to, brilliant. I'm sorry. And I listened to Tom Papa's album and was sort of so he that's amazing. He said that because he's one of the guys that I was listening to and going, what does this feel like? Does it feel like you're in the room? Does it feel like he was doing it, you know, word for word, almost in a studio with a studio audience? Obviously not in a voiceover booth, but that was really important to me too, is to like get something that was like the greats and he is one of the greats. So yeah, I'm happy to hear that. But no, Steve no, Martin, let, uh, let me ask yeah. you this. Uh, uh, Tom Papa has a, uh, a, a, to use the um, contemporary term, a so-called side hustle. Uh, <laughs> Tom is an excellent baker of bread. TJ Miller, do you have anything, any aspect of your life that people don't know about that you're actually good at other than being uh, funny? Is there something like right? A, I mean, I like do you water I make ski peanut well? Butter or and hot sauce. You know, well, I make peanut butter and hot sauce. Anything else? Uh, are, you, are you like a great skier? Do you skateboard? Oh, you... I, yes. Yeah, I, I literally almost forgot this. I was like, "What is it?" I'm a juggler. Oh, oh my so god! I've I've juggled. I've been juggling since I was six, and I did it in my act for a while. I have a special coming out called Philosophy Circus. And I have three specials that are completely improvised, and one also from Nashville that are on my YouTube channel. So if you go on my YouTube channel, you will see like so many, uh, there's so much content, but I'm releasing a special called Philosophy Circus. And it has, I can juggle pins, knives, um, torches. I'm a five ball juggler, which is sort of the black belt of juggling, wow. and ball juggling. Um, but I do a very specific type of juggling that almost no one else can do. And it got me to be a member at the Magic Castle wow. as a magician member in Los Angeles, which if any of you haven't been to the Magic Castle, tell me and I'll send you passes. I just went a few months go. ago. It's yeah, amazing. What do you think of it? It was so Isn't cool. It yes, it was and very cool. Isn't magic amazing? Yes. This guy, this guy wanted to call somebody up and I was like, call my agent up. My agent, she's right here. Call her up. And he's like, wow, you're really excited. And I go, I love magic. Magic is great. <laughs> and the whole crowd exploded laughing. And I was sort of, I'm not embarrassed, but I was rolling my eyes. I'm like, TJ, this isn't really your time to be funny. This isn't your audience. But I became a magician member because I can cigar box juggle. Oh, wow. And what that is, is it's th three blocks. It's actually W.C. Fields invented it. But you've got three blocks. I'm having trouble with the spatial aspects of this with the zoom and there's a middle block and two side blocks and you sort of manipulate the middle one and flip it around and then you take one box sure and grab the other one. Oh yeah That's and cool. so it's it it's really cool nobody really does it it's my favorite type of juggling and so that sometimes i can just out of the blue i was at a party and at kate's friend's house kate that's my wife and Kate's friends sort of say, hey, we know you do this orange juggling thing. Could you do it for our kids? We told them about it. I said, of course. And so I hid behind the island in the kitchen and then suddenly said, we have a performance. And I slowly came up here. I can do it in this. Oh, okay, so now <laughs> T.J. Miller is ducking down and now he's rising from below his desk. Uh -huh. and there's his mustache. He's back. <laughs> and, then, and then I took three oranges, right? This is all physical comedy also. You won't see any of this on the album. And I take three oranges and I juggle them. And then slowly, this is usually done with apples in vaudeville and with buskers. So I'm juggling them 
and slowly I take a bite out of once, you know, really quickly. And slowly I, <laughs> and I eat the entire orange. Whoa. And it is so funny. So shocking. Cause you've never seen a man eat an orange without peeling it. That's great. Uh, yeah. And so it's very, very, and it doesn't taste great. You guys don't need to try it. Okay. Um, but it, it's just so surprising. It's messy. It's funny. It looks crazy. And so I love doing that both for children and uh, and adults, you know, people that come to my shows. Um, but they always say a magician uh, should always should perform for children, but they love to perform for an audience of adults. And I kind of feel the same way. Like I love juggling and watching children get so excited about it. But it's also funny to do it with adults because all of all adults are like, I could learn how to juggle. <laughs> but in the moment, they're like, I don't know how he does that. <laughs> so it's a fun, it's a fun little. So that's my side hustle. And next time I come in, I'll do the orange. That's cool. When I'm in there in the studio. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, there are a couple of other comedians that are pretty good jugglers. Emo Phillips. Really? Yeah. Sean Morey, Emo Phillips. And who's the guy that opened I, for Michael Jackson? Chris Bliss. Chris Bliss opened for Michael Jackson. Chris Bliss. Believe it or not, he's yeah. an unbelievable juggler. Uh, but that's a cool, that's a cool so skill. Funny. Now let me, let me ask this. Yeah, I like it. I, I know in a couple of weeks you're heading out. Are you going to keep the um, the mustache that turns into your sideburns uh, for your stage shows beginning in Michigan, coming up on the 21st through the 23rd at the Comedy Castle? I'm so excited to do the Comedy Castle. I unfortunately will not have this because this weekend my wife and I are going to my father's 80th birthday mm. in Kansas City, and I think the greatest. I never give him presents because he's one of those guys. Don't give me any gifts. I don't want any gifts. I can buy the gifts that I want. I don't want you to give me something that I end up not liking. But I think the greatest gift that I could give him is I didn't get a manicure because Cade wanted me to get one because I, I cut my nails on my own. And the greatest gift I can give him is not showing up with this <laughs> facial. Yeah, I, I, as a man of a certain age, I agree. Uh, T.J. Miller, yeah. uh, the new special. Uh, we've had, That's got to be it's got to be the title of your autobiography. <laughs> as a man of a certain age. Uh, <laughs> the new stand-up album is called Smooth Peanut Butter. And uh, here's a dumb question. Can one get your uh, merch online? Indeed. So my hot sauce and my peanut butter is available on Amazon.com. You know, if you guys want to throw up a link to that. And also for my website, TJ Miller does not have a website. <laughs> That's TJ Motors that have a website.com. TJ, what a great pleasure. Continued success. Uh, I remain Thank a big you. fan. And uh, uh, your live album is available. I should point this out. Uh, Apple, Spotify, Amazon. It's entitled Smooth Peanut Butter. And uh, don't forget TJ's Hot Sauce, et cetera, et cetera. Congratulations on the stash. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> my, my, my deepest sympathy to your wife. Uh, okay, God, see, thanks, thanks, guys. I always love a you. pleasure. I'm such a big fan. Bye. Thanks, oh, you, appreciate you, it. Thanks, thanks, man. God, that guy's funny. Um, yes. Boy, that mustache. I'd get killed if I tried that. Oh. He does look like the guy in the big uh, bicycle. I think it's kind of cool. You, it is cool. Be, you would really absolutely cool. be able to pull that off. It would look no, amazing. No, she wouldn't you. allow that. It'd look amazing. That's what you me. mean, right? Well, I just, I, 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 you I, might want to invest in a fake one just for just for fun to see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I thought it was really cool. Now, I, I would know, not make it. Uh, Josh, on your, on your wish list slash bucket list, you have expressed interest in riding on a so-called penny farthing. Yeah, yeah. I'd and we've that. had several people volunteer to bring one over here. Okay. Um, uh, you, would you actually try it? Yes, yeah, yeah. I, uh, Heck yeah. But if you fall, aren't you dead? I mean, aren't you going to... Oh, I'll, hurt. Gonna I'll, I'll, I'll probably get hurt real bad, yeah. Separate yeah. shoulder at yeah. the most, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah. I, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Is there a, way, a place you could practice it where you'd be uh, tethered on some kind of a... <laughs> tethered? Yeah. <laughs> like I have some kind of a harness on. And then you'd be... And then what, so if gonna, I fell, I would just dangle? Somebody's yeah. going to run alongside? No, we, we have friends that can get a crane here. <laughs> a um, crane? I know a crane guy. I do. Okay. A crane. What do you yeah. need to tell us now, though, about something? <laughs> no, I, I suppose you want to hear about something important. Yes. Yeah. As opposed to my... I do have a... I had a, cr a crane recently at my house. <laughs> All right. Oh, After everything uh, Tom's done to me, I know that every now and then I start to reach for my computer so I can 
hook up with the people at BetterHelp. Uh, I'm <laughs> sure, Tom, uh, Josh, We've you're, all been in you're therapy right there. Right there. Logging in now. Yeah, yeah well, right right, it's, it's so funny because the Bob and Tom Show is sponsored by BetterHelp. And uh, BetterHelp has a, I guess you could say a better idea, a great idea. They go where the clients are. And that is, uh, yeah, yeah. What, what they're, they're making the important thing, the, the important aspect of, of having therapy, they're making it easier to access. It's that simple. With BetterHelp, the therapy itself is done online. You'll take a, a little kind of a quiz, a little questionnaire. You'll get matched up with a licensed therapist. More than 25,000 therapists are now participating in this. And uh, by the way, you, once you get your assigned therapist, you can always switch. In fact, there's no charge if you do, in fact, switch. But the important thing is the therapy is done online, so it's extraordinarily convenient. You don't have to get in your car, leave work, sit in the lobby, wonder what that guy's problem is across the hallway from you. No, none of that's going to be happening because it's, it's, you got privacy going. Plus, you're doing it online. So it could be like a phone call, chatting back and forth, or like a Zoom call, or you could even text back and forth. I, I, this should be called whatever works for you. Better help. And uh, you find out what I'm talking about by visiting betterhelp.com slash BT show. The slash BT show part knocks 10% off your first month. So give it a shot. Better help. H E L P. Better help dot com slash BT show, empowering you to be the best version of yourself. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with better help. Tell them the Bob and Tom show sent you uh, when we come back. Once again, we continue to educate. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, yes, yes, yes. Albert Einstein's birthday and more. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Add to or continue the conversation. Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven baked cheese. It arrives pre baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. Hey! 
That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Yesterday we were talking about hickeys. Yeah, I have a story oh, for you. you Which one of your daughters has one? You had those hickeys, yeah. Oh, and they're and your daughters. Yeah. No, nobody has hickeys, but we have death by hickey. Death by hickey. Mm -hmm. Well, my boyfriend was a vampire. <laughs> were that me? I'm sure the officers would stand over my body and say, "I have a feeling this is how he'd wanted to go." <laughs> <laughs> More chalk. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, because I'm so oh gigantic. Oh, my God. One Here's stick one of, of chalk the things I've ever would done. never <laughs> be enough We had to use a whole box all. of chalk to outline his... Look uh, at him. He had to take his headphones off, <laughs> lean back, and he's yeah. screaming with laughter. He's, he's just an awful person. <laughs> I wish I were an actual sports of sorts. I could rip your body, your limbs. More chalk. <laughs> Lucky numbers. Man, if that weren't funny, I'd be you so mad. You know what, Josh? I ate all day yesterday, and I really feel good about it, so screw it. You know Sorry. what? It doesn't matter. I was just trying to lighten the, the sad picture we all had of Josh lying there dead. Oh. Maybe lighten the, oh, lighten oh, the mood. Did. You know, I think yeah. that's even more insulting. He's taken an insult. He tries. He says, you made me do it. You've got to do it. He says, okay. So he tries to get him on. Can't do it. He says, I can't even get these past my thighs. He says, I can't get into these panties. He says, yeah, and until you change your attitude, you're not going to either, partner. <laughs> That's your tale from the Old West. That concludes another exciting episode. Uh, Murray, Murray Whiskey, Whiskey. Whiskey. Frontier, Frontier Pyromaniac idiot. over here. What are you, are you lighting up the studio? Yeah, this thing, it's not working. I'm sorry. Nothing. Uh, just... Brought to you by that new Japanese Jewish restaurant, Sosumi. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maria. <laughs> Hi, this is Mike McRae, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. But it's strange living back in America, you know. I've, I mean, America's like a foreign country to me in a lot of ways. Why? I, just, I don't know. Things are weird. You know, I have friends that don't eat bread anymore. Everybody's on a low-carb diet. No. And Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body. And the disciples said, Jesus, we're all on low-carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. <laughs> We want to look good in the painting. <laughs> Let's talk to our Welcome guest, Tom Foss. Now, uh, do you have any animals? Uh, I got a, two horses, about 15 chickens, dogs, cats. So you are in the country, huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. gravel road, one way gravel road. Really? Do you eat the chickens? No, the eggs. Ah. Huh. My wife eggs. said she'd never kill one of the chickens. Really? But she doesn't have any problems scrambling up the kids. <laughs> 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 That's sweet. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. On November 15, 1864, Major General William Tecumseh Sherman began his famous march to the sea. Sherman led his troops from Atlanta, Georgia, to the ocean port of Savannah. As he was leaving, Sherman set the city on fire, gutting 40% of it. Atlanta wouldn't be burned this badly again until they gave their franchise tag to Michael Vick. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Tom's. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Of course, this brings us to the most important part of our show, I think, the educational portion. Mm. And today is not just Pi Day. It's also uh, Albert Einstein's birthday. Ooh. Man, of course, famous for Christy what? What are the odds of that? Um, well, let's see. He Inventing did... the bagel. Uh, right? He invented, no. the, he invented the bagel. Eagles and Einstein's C's. bagel? Where? Oh. <laughs> I see. No, I, I don't think that's so. not him. Uh, no, no. That's not the him. theory of relativity, you tool. <laughs> Mass and theory. Gosh. I have a theory. He didn't. I have a theory of relatives. Oh yeah. Oh, I thought that was a fear yeah. of relatives. No, 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 no. It, uh, Interstellar the theory of relatives. Oh, okay. uh, lending oh. money to family equals zero return. <laughs> um, let's see. Albert uh, was brilliant. His brother Frank was a monster. Yes, he's right. Oh. Frank Einstein was a monster. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard 
filmed it for us. Thank you very much. Told it twice. Oh, you filmed it. Oh, told it twice. Uh, uh, <clears throat> MC Square would be a good name for a rapper. <laughs> like if you like, maybe if you okay. were like, do, like doing rap raps for kids that are like kind of a hip hop science thing. Yeah, that sounds unwatchable. Um, yeah, really. it'd, be, it'd be it'd be kind of a kind of a PBS. Slash... You know what it sounds like? It's, no, never mind. Go ahead. Like a PBS thing. Today, yeah. March fourteenth. Okay, you want? Uh, oh, happy birthday, the great actor Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Once again, named okay. named himself after the movie The Caine Mutiny. He Michael literally... Caine. His name was what? Mickle. Door for some Morris Mickelson. Is Mikkelson. he still alive? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's been in so many great movies. Oh yeah. Uh, Jaws: The Revenge. Michael Caine, and he he literally <laughs> walked out of a building and saw a marquee that said Caine Mutiny. Next. So well, well, Josh, he could have been named. I mean, if he'd come out a month later, um, Michael One Hundred and One Dalmatians. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, been, I nexted you. <laughs> that would have been a bad. Uh, Quincy Jones, you want to badmouth Quincy somehow? He's only Gosh, a genius. No. No. Um, Married uh, Peggy Lipton, didn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, and his yeah. their daughter is uh, uh, Rashida. Rashida Jones. Yeah, yeah. she's great. The star of Quincy MD. Um, yeah. What? Oh, that was Jack Klugman. Yeah, you were close. Same thing. Though. Uh, let's see who else had a birthday today. I don't he even wrote know the that theme. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Steph Curry, born in this date in 1988. Mm. He's had almost 3,700 threes. He's a uh, pretty pretty good player, huh? Uh, how right? about uh, yeah. happy birthday, Simone Biles, the brilliant gymnast? Oh, yeah. Will she be in Paris? Yes. Oh, She's wow. Back. Okay. Unstoppable. Um, yeah. Is There's she like her, 44 uh, now? Husband went to uh, Chicago. He's playing with the Bears now. <laughs> oh, he did? He's no, he's no longer a backer? Oh. Mm -mm. <gasps> um, I'll just let that sit there. Um, <laughs> God, you're no, such no a bad, bad, you, bad How would you man? stay away from oh, that? Okay, Christy, this there. is an easy one. Whew. I expect you to get this correct. Bore, um, on this date, uh, this a certain thing was patented by this gentleman in 1889. Wow, that's. I'm going to tell you just. <laughs> A ten dollars says she gets it. Okay. Well, yeah. you I thought you were done. I thought you were. I didn't think you were going to give her any more clues. No, no, no. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Now I want to know what was it that he patented, patented. in eighteen eighty nine. Yes. His name was. Uh, are, you, are, you, are we betting here, Josh? I <laughs> oh no, no. I, I bet you. Can ten bucks. She, she she's got. very. She's really intelligent. Oh, thank you, Josh. Ferdinand von Zeppelin. <laughs> well, he patented the Zeppelin, obviously. Yes, the navigable balloon. Right. Correct. You owe me ten bucks, Josh. <laughs> a dirigible, right. if you will. Um, dirigibles and Zeppelins. Ego the same. Mania. I don't know the difference. Uh, oh, there's Richard a Richard Airship. Uh, yeah, what is it? Dirigible and dirigible and one of them has a superstructure. Yeah. There's some guy named Graf. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Grafenberg uh, uh, de no, decibel. No, that's the G spot. <laughs> the G spot. Okay, uh, the, the Dolby sound system. All right. Uh, all I know is that they originally used hydrogen, right, Ace? And Till, yeah, stop until using hydrogen. <laughs> yeah. I don't know today why. is Pi Day. Here's what we learned on the show today. It's Albert Einstein's birthday. Christy Lee was telling us about uh, a beach she went to at a resort where Randy Moss was running yeah. his boot camp out yeah. on the beach. Randy Moss's boot camp. We we love Body about, Holiday. Great place if you ever get a chance. Go we there. were talking about Randy Moss because there's a new wide receiver coming into the NFL that uh, people are reminded by Randy of Randy's uh, accent. Here is Xavier Leggett, wide receiver from... South Carolina, and he has quite a uh, distinctive uh, accent. Oh, uh, man, I say the deep ball, man, but uh, I really feel like any way that I get the ball in my hand, I could get it to that end zone. He getting to that I, end I zone. just want to talk to him for four hours. Yeah, this is beautiful. Right? I love that way that guy talks. Just man. Beautiful. Straight cash, homie. That's Randy Moss, of course. Yep. Uh, Jess Hooker is going to make us egg and toast, a toad in a hole, a <laughs> mud in a basket. Next what week. is it? Can't wait. Yeah, yeah. Bullseye, bookity, bookity, a lot of different issues. So who we'll gives put, on a plate? We'll put a period okay, at the okay, end of you know something? To be done none, with none for Josh. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us will enjoy. You just this sit, topic certainly sit over has there. taken a lot of beating over the years. And Is she going to cook them two different ways so we can judge which one's all, better? All yep. kinds of ways. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, Joe Flacco is now the backup quarterback in uh, Indianapolis for the Indianapolis Colts, making Tom very happy. I want to meet Joe. He excited. wants to meet Joe. Man, I hope that happens. Flacco. Uh, yeah, Flacco. Uh, let's see. You know, he, uh, he's very uh, we secure about... conscious. He wears a Flacco jacket <laughs> Oh, <laughs> whenever he plays football. We talked hey. about pipe organs today for some reason. Yeah, because yeah. I heard about the I got an estimate association on one. of pipe organ builders. An estimate on a brand new pipe organ. Yeah, you're going uh, to buy one? Pat you're Godwin, gonna... you want to give those stats for me? $850,000. Whoa. That is really something. Mm -hmm. Well, they only need to make one or two a year, right? Yeah. 
I'm, I, well, I'm, I'm sure the materials lot. cost a lot. Uh, Josh called people who litter slobby McDouchebag. That's right. <laughs> yes. Pick up your, after yourselves. I agree. Al Jackson expects the, uh, 20 to 30 inches of snow where he lives, evidently. Is that Denver. what he said, really? It's heading in. Yep. Uh, we talked about gorilla hail in Kansas and Missouri. Anything in there about a kite and a helicopter? Oh. Oh, boy. Oh boy. I tried. <laughs> that didn't make the list? No. Yeah, no, we made the list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> making a making a sound editorial stance. That's Chick McGee. This is the Bob the and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Even though we're not too much to look at, you can also watch the show on our YouTube channel.